seniors to ever leave uh, the University of Richmond. So that's something you're playing for. Got to be excited. If you're an underclassman, you got to play for those guys. This is their day, and you got to make it happen for them. And that's going to be something that is at stake on this senior day today. Both of these teams playing their last football game of the season. And when you talk about leaders and William and Mary, their defense has been one of the solid points for their team this year. It's a good overall team defense, Chris, but it's led by Nate Atkins in the middle at that linebacker spot, and he's done a great job all season long. Yeah, Nate Atkins had an opportunity to talk to some of the coaches from William and Mary, and basically he is your prototypical. Uh, you know, just just middle linebacker. He's physical, runs uh, sideline to sideline, and, and just makes all the checks and, and all the corrections uh, over there on defense. So, you know, he's going to need to have a big game if, if this William & Mary defense and this William & Mary team is going to have an opportunity to win today. And on the other side, of course, while it's a team defense, as we mentioned, for William & Mary, they'll have to stop uh, quarterback Kyle Aletta. That's been a task for a lot of defenses for the uh, senior from uh, Pennsylvania who's been a part of this program for a long, long time, set a number of records. More still at stake today. And for Kyle Valletta, a last chance to play football, which I'm sure he wasn't counting on at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I'm sure he wasn't counting on that. But, I mean, I tell you what, when you talk Kyle Valletta, uh, you know, great season, yes. Great career, yes. But you really got to talk about his legacy. Right. The kid is just right. special. Uh, and when I talk about legacy, set. I'm talking about his We're leadership. If, if you just – I mean, you can watch play. the video. And, yeah, you make he makes the plays, but – He's just a difference maker. When you look at where Richmond was and where they are and just what he's done for the program since he's been here, he gets physical when he, gets, when he needs to get physical. He can throw the deep ball. He's a leader on the field. And I tell you what, man, he's going to have an opportunity to play on the next level. So excited for that kid. Want to see him get the win in his whole senior class and, move, and go out on the right the right, uh, the right track. And you've been a part of these games before, of course, Chris, with a lot on the line. But the emotions can run heavy. So sometimes on senior day, both sides have to keep that in check. Yeah, you got to keep that in check. And I said before, this is the underclassman because I'm telling you, as a senior, you're going to be passionate, you're going to be emotional, and maybe a little emotional in the beginning. And those underclassmen, you got to play for your seniors, get them through that, you know, kind of first quarter and go from there. It's a great afternoon for football. We got a great game coming up here in just a moment. It's the Tribe and the Spiders coming up next. We'll get the starting lineups and the kickoff underway from Robin Stadium in just a few moments. I think we're. I, I think we're. Blake, you didn't even look at it, man. <laughs> Blake, Blake is like, I'm good. Let's get out of here. Trying to talk you into it. The last game of the year. I'm disconnected. We can't do it. Rick's already disconnected. We're done. <laughs> Rick, Rick is shutting down. Rick is moving the camera out of here, man. What? <laughs> Rick is shutting down. I'm taking the jacket off. So. I'll take one. From Robin Stadium on the campus of the University of Richmond on this nice Late fall afternoon, it is time for college football action as the Richmond Spiders will play host to the tribe of William and Mary in the 120. From Robin Stadium on the campus of the University of Richmond on this nice late fall afternoon, it is time for college football action as the Richmond Spiders will play host to the tribe of William and Mary in the 128th edition of
Late fall afternoon, it is time for college football action as the Richmond Spiders will play host to the tribe of William and Mary in the 128th edition of this meeting and the Capital Cup at stake once again between these two squads. Along with my broadcast partner, Chris Anderson, Robert Fish here. Good to be along with you this afternoon. And, Chris, we've got an important football game, although for the first time in a while, neither one of these teams has playoff implications on the line, but there are a lot of other things at stake when these two teams get together, and that's going to be true again today, too. Well, you've got the Commonwealth Cup, uh, one of the oldest uh, rivalries in the South. Uh, I think just personally for these teams, you got to talk about, you know, Richmond playing for a winning season and, and just playing for these seniors. This is going to be one of the greatest groups of seniors to ever uh, leave University of Richmond, have an opportunity to be the third winningest uh, group of seniors to ever leave uh, the University of Richmond. So that's something you're playing for. Got to be excited. If you're an underclassman, you got to play for those guys. This is their day, and you got to make it happen for them. And that's going to be something that is at stake on this senior day today. Both of these teams playing their last football game of the season. And when you talk about leaders and William and Mary, their defense has been one of the solid points for their team this year. It's a good overall team defense, Chris, but it's led by Nate Atkins in the middle at that linebacker spot, and he's done a great job all season long. Yeah, Nate Atkins had an opportunity to talk to some of the coaches from William and Mary, and basically he is your prototypical uh, you know, just just middle linebacker. He's physical, runs uh, sideline to sideline, and, and just makes all the checks and, and all the corrections uh, over there on defense. So, you know, he's going to need to have a big game if, if this William & Mary defense and this William & Mary team is going to have an opportunity to win today. And on the other side, of course, while it's a team defense, as we mentioned, for William & Mary, they'll have to stop uh, quarterback Kyle Aletta. That's been a task for a lot of defenses for the uh, senior from uh, Pennsylvania who's been a part of this program for a long, long time, set a number of records. More still at stake today. And for Kyle Aletta, a last chance to play football, which I'm sure he wasn't counting on at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I'm sure he wasn't counting on that. But, I mean, I tell you what, when you talk Kyle Aletta, uh, you know, great season, yes. Great career, yes. But you really got to talk about his legacy. Right. The kid is just right. special. Uh, and when I talk about legacy, I'm talking about his leadership. If, if you just – I mean, you can watch the video. And, yeah, you make he makes the plays, but – He's just a difference maker. When you look at where Richmond was and where they are and just what he's done for the program since he's been here, he gets physical when he, gets, when he needs to get physical. He can throw the deep ball. He's a leader on the field. And I tell you what, man, he's going to have an opportunity to play on the next level. So excited for that kid. Want to see him get the win in his whole senior class and, move, and go out on the right, the, right, uh, the right track. And you've been a part of these games before, of course, Chris, with a lot on the line. But the emotions can run heavy. So sometimes on senior day, both sides have to keep that in check. Yeah, you got to keep that in check. And I said before, this is the underclassman because I'm telling you, as a senior, you're going to be passionate, you're going to be emotional, and maybe a little emotional in the beginning. And those underclassmen, you got to play for your seniors, get them through that, you know, kind of first quarter and go from there. It's a great afternoon for football. We got a great game coming up here in just a moment. It's the Tribe and the Spiders coming up next. We'll get the starting lineups and the kickoff underway from Robin Stadium in just a few moments. Remember to take advantage of a special deal from Papa John's. Anytime the Spiders win, fans can enjoy 50% off their entire online order the next day at PapaJohns.com.
Riders starting lineup. Kyle Loletta, redshirt senior, quarterback, Exton, Pennsylvania. Alex Light, offensive line, Salem, Virginia. Blaine Markham, offensive line, Winsburg, Virginia. John Yarbrough, junior, offensive line, Homewood, Alabama. Marius Young, offensive line, Richmond, Virginia. Patrick Klebert, fifth year senior, offensive tackle, New Orleans, Louisiana. Garrett Hudson, senior, tight end, Wake Forest, North Carolina. Tyler Wilkins, junior, wide receiver, Richmond, Virginia, baby. Hello, Drake, Redshirt junior, wide receiver, Charlotte, North Carolina. Patrol Simpson, Redshirt sophomore, wide receiver, and then Ham Xavier Goodall, running back, Richmond, Virginia. Andrew Clyde, redshirt junior, defensive tackle, Dallas, Texas. Red Shirt Senior, cornerback, Wichita, Kansas. Graham Latham, long snapper, Midlothian, Virginia. DJ Alkowski, punter, Warrington, Virginia. Griffin Trow, place kicker, Culver, Indiana. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please welcome to the field the Verina High School Marching Band. Chris Anderson, Robert Fish here, good to be along with you this afternoon. And Chris, we've got an important football game, although for the first time in a while, neither one of these teams has playoff implications on the line, but there are a lot of guys. It's, it's their day, and you got to make it happen for them. And that's going to be something that is at stake on this senior day today. Both of these teams playing their last football game of the season, and when you talk about leaders and William and Mary, their defense has been one of the solid points for their team this year. It's a good overall team defense, Chris, but it's led by Nate Atkins in the middle at that linebacker spot, and he's done a great job all season long. Yeah, Nate Atkins had an opportunity to talk to some of the coaches from William and Mary, and basically he is your prototypical uh, you know, just, just middle linebacker. He's physical, runs uh, sideline to sideline, and, and just makes all the checks and, and all the corrections uh, over there on defense. So, 
you know, he's going to need to have a big game if, if this William & Mary defense and this William & Mary team is going to have an opportunity to win today. And on the other side, of course, while it's a team defense, as we mentioned, for William & Mary, they'll have to stop uh, quarterback Kyle Aletta. That's been a task for a lot of defenses for the uh, senior from uh, Pennsylvania who's been a part of this program for a long, long time, set a number of records. More still at stake today. And for Kyle Aletta, a last chance to play football, which I'm sure he wasn't counting on at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I'm sure he wasn't counting on that. But, I mean, I tell you what, when you talk Kyle Aletta, uh, you know, great season, yes. Great career, yes. But you really got to talk about his legacy. Right. The kid is just right. special. Uh, and when I talk about legacy, set. I'm talking about his leadership. If, if you just – I mean, you can watch the video. And, yeah, you make he makes the plays. But – He's just a difference maker. When you look at where Richmond was and where they are and just what he's done for the program since he's been here, he gets physical when he, gets, when he needs to get physical. He can throw the deep ball. He's a leader on the field. And I tell you what, man, he's going to have an opportunity to play on the next level. So excited for that kid. Want to see him get the win in his whole senior class and, move, and go out on the right the right, uh, the right track. And you've been a part of these games before, of course, Chris, with a lot on the line. But the emotions can run heavy. So sometimes on senior day, both sides have to keep that in check. Yeah, you got to keep that in check. And I said before, this is the underclassman because I'm telling you, as a senior, you're going to be passionate, you're going to be emotional, and maybe a little emotional in the beginning. And those underclassmen, you got to play for your seniors, get them through that, you know, kind of first quarter and go from there. It's a great afternoon for football. We got a great game coming up here in just a moment. It's the Tribe and the Spiders coming up next. We'll get the starting lineups and the kickoff underway from Robin Stadium in just a few moments. How do we make sure there's
Mic check, one, two, three. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Yeah, we can't even hear Chris up here in his headset. It was working earlier. Go ahead, Chris. Check, check, check. I can't hear myself. Try it again. Check, 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 check. I don't hear, I don't hear him. And he can't hear anything in his box right now either. I don't know what's going on here. change hello 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 check 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 no no yeah we can't we check, can't check, he check, can't check. hear it i got him now hold on you got me i got you all i did was take this out i don't hear my i mean i can hear you now but you can't hear yourself no not really i mean i can if you can hear me i I'll, can hear you yeah let if me you see. can hear me i'll, I'll work it out yeah Okay, I'm on Chris's headset now. I don't know why he can't hear. Yeah, I'm. I'm I switched headsets. I can't. We. I can't even hear him in his own headset here. So I don't know what's going on. Um, it was working earlier. All right, hang on. We'll check, check, check. Huh? This is weird. All right, I don't know why we're not hearing anything. Hang on, let me see something. All right, hold on. Yeah, I just switched his headphones into my headphone jack and I could hear, so I know it's not that. I don't know if there's something wrong with this box. Hang on, I can't hear you, hang on. I have to switch the headset, okay. Yeah, I've unplugged them and plugged them back in a couple times. Because it was working. Is it anything to do with the wall plug? Did we un I've done that a couple times, too. Uh, well, I don't know what else to check. You don't have another box, do you? All right. Okay. Um, let's see. We still got a little time here, I guess. Let me look at something. What you got?
From Robin Stadium on the campus of the University of Richmond on this nice late fall afternoon, it is time for college football action as the Richmond Spiders will play host to the tribe of William and Mary in the 128th edition of this meeting and the Capital Cup at stake once again between these two squads. Along with my broadcast partner, Chris Anderson, Robert Fish here. Good to be along with you this afternoon. And, Chris, we've got an important football game, although for the first time in a while, neither one of these teams has playoff implications on the line. But there are a lot of other things at stake when these two teams get together, and that's going to be true again today, too. Well, you've got the Commonwealth Cup, uh, one of the oldest uh, rivalries in the South. Uh, I think just personally for these teams, you got to talk about, you know, Richmond playing for a winning season and, and just playing for these seniors. This is going to be one of the greatest groups of seniors to ever uh, leave University of Richmond, have an opportunity to be the third winningest uh, group of seniors to ever leave uh, the University of Richmond. So that's something you're playing for. Got to be excited. If you're an, un uh, you know, just, just middle linebacker, he's physical, runs uh, sideline to sideline and, and just makes all the checks and, and all the correct. Uh, over there on defense. So, you know, he's going to need to have a big game if, if this William and Mary defense and this William and Mary team is going to have an opportunity to win today. And on the other side, of course, while it's a team defense, as we mentioned, for William and Mary, they'll have to stop uh, quarterback Kyle Valletta. That's been a task for a lot of defenses for the uh, senior from uh, Pennsylvania who's been a part of this program for a long, long time, set a number of records. More still at stake today. And for Kyle Valletta, a last chance to play football, which I'm sure he wasn't counting on at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I'm sure he wouldn't count on that. But I mean, I tell you what, when you talk Kyle Aletta, uh, you know, great season, yes. Great career, yes. But you really got to talk about his legacy. Right. The kid is just right. special. Uh, and when I talk about set. legacy, I'm talking about his leadership. If, if you just, I mean, you can watch the video and yeah, you make he makes the plays, but he's just a difference maker. When you look at where Richmond was and where they are and just what he's done for the program since he's been here. He gets physical when he, gets, when he needs to get physical. He can throw the deep ball. He's a leader on the field. And I tell you what, man, he's going to have an opportunity to play on the next level. So excited for that kid. Want to see him get the win in his whole senior class and move and go out on the right, the, right, uh, the right track. And you've been a part of these games before, of course, Chris, with a lot on the line. But the emotions can run heavy. So sometimes on senior day, both sides have to keep that in check. Yeah, you got to keep that in check. And I said before, this is the underclassmen because I'm telling you, as a senior, you're going to be passionate, you're going to be emotional, and maybe a little emotional in the beginning. And those underclassmen, you got to play for your seniors, get them through that, you know, kind of first quarter and go from there. It's a great afternoon for football. We got a great game coming up here in just a moment. It's the Tribe and the Spiders coming up next. We'll get the starting lineups and the kickoff underway from Robin Stadium in just a few moments. How do we make sure there's toppings in each bite of Papa John's pizza? We check 80,000 times a year. Now get an extra large two topping pizza for just $11. Everyone's doing their part to make your game day better. At Outback, Big Australia is back. So for a limited time, your favorites are getting even bigger. 18 ounce center cup sirloin kind of big. Aussie bloom big. Boomerang beer flights big. Six layer chocolate cake and ultimate great barrier combo big. Our biggest entrees ever. Hurry in now. Outback Steakhouse. Aussie rules. And come in every day for big lunch combos starting at $7.99. Imagine a place where your son thrives. Where he reaches his potential. Where 100% of the students gain college admission. The student to faculty ratio is 8 to 1. And your son learns to excel in the classroom and be... The Spiders have won that coin toss, Chris Anderson, and they have deferred the option to the second half. So we'll get a look at the William & Mary offense against the Richmond defense to open things up here this afternoon. Tell you what, I don't know what it was like in that locker room. Maybe we'll talk to Sean a little bit later and find out. But the guys were, prior to the game, were excited down on the field. They're ready to go. Uh, we said in the pregame, just want to send those seniors out right. Uh, I'm telling you right off the bat, Fish, William & Mary... You got to hold me back a little bit. I get excited up here for this one. <laughs> Quite all right. There's Kyle Laletta warming up. So, again, Richmond did uh, defer that option to the second half, but the redshirt seen out of Exton, Pennsylvania. 
and a 6'3", 215-pounder in what is going to be his final collegiate game. Now, I would imagine, too, Chris, that he'll get some postseason opportunities, perhaps, to play in maybe some of the, the college games that take place toward an eye on the NFL draft. But we'll get a look at Kyle a little bit later. First, the William & Mary offense on the field. That means a kickoff coming. There's Madison Day, one of the seniors that's playing in his final game. John Cherison will do the honors for Richmond to kick off here. Looks like Cherison's got the wind to his back a little bit. Let's see if maybe he can get this in the end zone, get this thing started off correctly. Back deep, Nate Evans, who's also one of the running backs for this tribe team. And Cherison will put a foot into this one, and we're underway. He averages about 56 yards a kick return. Take it on the near side. Richmond downfield quickly to make the stop. And William & Mary will open up shop right around the 24-yard line, first and 10. It's like true freshman Marcus Vinson on that tackle. Great job by him. I expect to hear a lot more from him as, the, uh, as his career continues here at, the, at Richmond. That was Noah Giles on the return. He's one of the three that will see some time in the backfield for the Tribe today. They open up with junior quarterback Tommy McKee, a 6'2", 205-pounder, out of Virginia Beach. And the Tribe sets up with the single back. Motion toward the formation and a reverse handoff sweeping right. Justin Rubin over with Samari swing, uh, Springs to bring down the ball carrier at the 30-yard line just shy of it. And the Tribe now with Jordan Lowry on the carry. Gets to a second down and about four. Yeah, Jerry L. Jordan in on that tackle. One of those seniors we talked about. A lot of stuff goes on on senior day. And uh, sometimes as a senior, you just want to get that first hit, that first you know contact to kind of forget about all that and just play football. Long look to the sideline for the play as the Tribe takes time in that huddle. They're going to be about ball control today, I would think, Chris, and running the football. Play clock down to five seconds here. Evans resets in the backfield alongside McGee, and Jimmy Laycock's going to take a quick timeout from that sideline as that took way too long to develop that time. Very interesting. Very interesting because it's very rare that you, you know, most teams these days are coming to the line like our offense and get, kind of getting the, the, the play from the sideline. Coach Laycock still kind of old school, still huddling up. And uh, that time you got you know, a lot of, lot of youth on their offense, so not ready to go. Saw the timeout taken early. One of the things for the Tribe with Jimmy Laycock, who's in his 38th year as a head coach, is that they've had some inconsistencies on offense this season. Over the last few games, they've played just a little bit better. There's Coach Laycock. He's second active in Division I wins, and with 109 CAA wins, second all-time in the CAA, although the Tribe is 0-7 entering today. So McKee back into the formation now as he sets up shop on what is officially a second and five from just shy of the 30. Pulls it down and runs with it. Justin Rubin meets him. He bounces off that tackle and reaches out to the 33 where it's going to be third and one after the run by Tommy McKee. I'll tell you what, one of the, one of the rarities for Jimmy Laycock coach uh, William and Mary Tribe team is that they've really been searching for something at quarterback. Uh, McKee had a, a pretty good game last week against Towson, but they've just been searching. I think they've uh, started three quarterbacks this year and played four, so they're just trying to find the answer. It looks like uh, they're going with McKee today. Third down out of the shotgun, that spread formation set up. McKee will run it again after a fake draw. He'll sweep the left side, and Johnson will run him out of bounds into the William & Mary sideline at the 41, but that's enough for the Tribe first down. And this will play right into their hands today. Chris, they want to, again, as we take another look at this play, just uh, really just a look at a, a play-action pass and then a run. So. Yeah, McKee is athletic. Uh, he can make plays with his feet. Uh, and, and it's a way to, to get him, you know, running the ball a little bit, get him settled down, get him to figure out, uh, take a couple looks at the U of R defense and see what they're going to hit him with. Nate Evans, the freshman, the lone setback on first and 10 from the 42. The key to roll out under pressure. Dodged a man, now tries to run through traffic. Hit and grabbed, and that ball thrown up for grabs. Madison Day was in there to put some pressure on McGee, who just threw it into the Tribe sideline. 
And there you see it. There's your play action. And, and Richmond had sniffed it out. They were in great coverage. They wanted to go deep. Tafon Mansa had their receiver covered like a blanket. So, you know, when you get that, that's the only thing. When you, when you do a play action and you want to go deep, if it's not there, really puts the quarterback in a bond. Got an injured tribe player. As we look at the uh, Richmond defense today, they'll be playing without Brandon Conacher, who's out of the lineup today. But they've got a, a number of veteran players up front. Uh, Trey Moore, one of the seniors we talked about, and Andrew Clyde, a junior returning. The Spiders have gonna, we talked about the Tribe defense, but Richmond coming into this one today, Chris, 67 tackles for loss. They've had 13 interceptions, and they've been very active defensively in their own right. I'll tell you what, if you just watch the growth and maturity of this defense, I mean, I know early in the season there was some panic. What are we doing? What's going on? But you got to remember, you got a new coaching staff learning these guys. These guys are playing a new defense. It is night and day when you compare this defense today to maybe the one we saw the, the, the first couple weeks of the season. They're reacting. Uh, they're not thinking, and they're just playing and having fun. Second and ten for the Tribe. Motion. That's Noah Giles, who sets up. The fake handoff, McKee will throw out in the far flat to Evans out of the backfield to the 50 and into the spider sideline near the sticks. They'll give him the progress down to the Richmond 47, and that may be enough for the first down. Yeah, back was out in the, about, out in the flats all by himself, so this will be interesting. Sometimes when you come into games like this, you know, coaches, they're, they're putting in new plays, they're instituting new packages, and that first couple drives of the game, they're going to try all their new stuff, see how it works. Uh, if you're Richmond Spiders, you just got to kind of hold tight and see if you can get a stop and kind of go from there. Another thing to note about the Tribe, of course, Chris Durant, their outstanding offensive tackle, has been injured. Nathan McConnell's been out of the lineup. Here's a sweep to the right to Evans, the freshman out of Richmond, Lee Davis High School in Mechanicsville, and he'll get all the way to the Spider 40 and thrown forward for another yard to the 39. A big run by Nate Evans, the freshman from right here in the Richmond area. That's something we want to stop right now. Uh, William and Mary, they had some success last year running a ball and, uh, and just definitely want to set the tone, stop that right now. Did a great job of stopping J or slowing down JMU's run attack last week. So we want to set the tone right now. Second and two from the 39. Looks like almost that inverted wishbone here or the diamond, if you want to call it that. Out of the shotgun, the handoff up the middle. And close to the first down, but maybe a half yard shy. We'll make it third and short for the Tribe on that carry. So the Richmond defense try to rise up here. That was Albert Funderburg on the carry there, a sophomore out of Monroe, North Carolina. Injured last year, but has gotten back into the mix a little bit. Third and short. Let's see what Jimmy Laycock has in his bag of tricks. I'm sure he'll keep it simple here. McKee works the shotgun. He runs the read over the left side. And squirting through the Richmond defense all the way down to the 29-yard line goes Funderburg again, and that'll be good enough for a Tribe first down. Tribe kind of have a three-headed monster at, uh, at running back. They get all those guys. Uh, they keep them fresh. They get them plenty of touches. And I think, you know, right now they're going to try to run at the Spider defense. I think if you watch film on us, you know we're fast, a fast defense. Uh, we're going to run with these side to side. If you're going to have any success running the ball, you're going to have to run right at us. Reuben and Clyde on the tackle, but well downfield. Colby Ritten in there, too. First and ten for the Tribe. Here's the snap. The key to throw under pressure. Chased by Clyde. He'll throw that into the Richmond sideline. Funderburg was over there, but the pass incomplete. Good pressure by Clyde that time. Clyde has just been a presence all year. Leads the CAA in sacks. Uh, anxious to see some of the you know end of the year accolades he'll he'll rack up. Uh, if they don't know about him, people are, you know if they don't know about him by now, I don't know what's going on. He's played so well for us and uh, really just made an impact every game in the CAA. Clyde with eight and a half sacks. That's also as you said number one in the nation, but a uh, number one in the CAA. But he's number nine in the country in sacks. So here on second and ten from the 29 of Richmond. Motion Evans out of the backfield, handoff to Funderburg, who cuts to the middle after starting right. And doesn't get a whole lot. He's out to the 27, where it's going to be third down after the pickup of two. And now another timeout with another injury, and that is Funderburg, who's down. So in the series here, William & Mary started with the opening possession, still controlling the football, but they've had three injuries during this opening stretch. Well, injuries... 
aside, not talking about the injuries, this drive is going about the way they'd wanted to do. They're controlling the clock. Uh, they're able to run the ball. They've tried to do a little play action. Haven't had a lot of success with it, but they've done enough to, to kind of keep the Spiders, uh, you know, honest, and, and they're just able to run. These injuries, obviously, no coach can plan for that, and you don't want that. Uh, we'll see what, you know, we'll see what they do. They have a couple other backs, but let's hope Funderburk is okay. Yeah, Funderburk was the, the top rusher in each of the first four games last year yep. for the Tribe. And he ended up with an injury that cost him the rest of the season. Now, in this game last year, uh, William & Mary had Anderson rush for over 200 yards as uh, the injured player, Funderburk, comes off the field. And we'll take another look at this play. It was a, a bruising run. Tried to run right up the middle. I think he ran right into Colby Ritten, the Spiders' freshman tackle. And Funderburk uh, writhing a little bit after the tackle was over, tried to get up. But he is walking under his own power toward the bench here. This is third and eight. This is not where William and Mary wants to be. The Spiders have been pretty good on third and down, but they've struggled a little bit in third and long. So these defensive backs have to step up and make a play here. McKee out of the shotgun. He'll take that snap. And, and he will sweep it to Evans going right. Chased by Waller. And Waller chases him down from behind and drives him down at the 22-yard line. Short of the first down, it will be fourth down. And we'll see if we see Chris Hooper come out for the field goal attempt here for the try. Hooper, 7 out of 13 field goal-wise. His longest is 41. This will be a 39-yarder from the far hash. For a chance for the Tribe to take the early lead as the clock ticks on here in the first quarter. Kicking into the wind, not sure if distance will be an issue, but we'll see. Yeah, that breeze could be a factor today with gusts coming. Low line drive kick, wobbling wide left, no good. So the field goal after the drive, the attempt comes up with no points for William and Mary, and the Spiders will take over first and ten after that missed field goal. And I know I've said it a couple times, but I'm going to say it a couple more times. Just in this first quarter, it's just a lot of emotion, particularly those seniors playing their last game. It's one of those weird situations where you're look, really looking to your underclassmen to kind of kind of lead you. You got the stop in that first drive. You go down, you settle, and uh, let's hope the offense can do the same thing. Uh, get, get a couple plays, hopefully they're successful, and get settled down a little bit. Here is Kyle Laletta now. Spiders redshirt senior takes the snap and a run right up the middle for Xavier Goodall. Bounces off the Nate Atkins tackle and rolls forward just shy of the 27. So he'll pick up a couple of yards there and make it second down in about six. I've, I've really been a Xavier Goodall uh, kind of fan since day one. I just like the way, you know, A, he can get skinny and get in that hole, and B, he just finds a way to break that initial tackle. That time, Nate Atkins had him squared up. He had to find a way to get out of the tackle and fall forward. Hand off. There goes Goodall over the left side. Stopped just shy of the 30. We'll leave the Spiders now with a third and two. Two solid runs puts you in third and manageable. See what they do here. You can go to the air, but you also have the option of running. Maybe get Kyle, Kyle Laletta outside, give him the option to run or pass. Gavin Johnson, one of the Tribe defenders in there to make the stop, a sophomore defensive end. So Laletta out of the shotgun, got a back to each side on this third and two. The sweep to Goodall going left, cuts inside. Set upon his block, picks his way across the 35 and has enough for the first down out to the Spider 36. You gotta love that. I love exactly what you said. Just kind of picks his way. There were defenders there, but those defenders had bodies on them. So just kind of reading those blocks, being patient, knowing what you gotta get done. Good block by Setapani, who's in there at left guard today. Alex Light shifted over to left tackle uh, with Adam Sammy out. So we're seeing Sam Setapani, uh, the freshman, getting some playing time last week and this week as well. Out of the shotgun, first and ten, Spiders at their own 36. Loletta bobbled the snap, can't pick it up. It's loose on the ground, and Alex Light eventually dives on it all the way back to the Spider 16-yard line. Ah, definitely a tough one. Don't want to see that. Not to say, you know, you don't want to say, I told you so, but sometimes it can be those nerves. You're just excited. Last game, you want to make the big play. It was a low snap, but usually Kyle handles that no problem. Makes it a, a very, very long second down. Let's see 
if we could just take a little bite out of, bite out of that on this play. Here's your center, John Yarbrough, a junior from Alabama. He has the duty of that snap right to Laletta here. Quarterback draw. Kyle will run up the middle of the 20, 25. Runs over a tackler, and the ball came out again as he got to the 29. And I think Richmond got it back. I think it did come out. Had a guy right there falling on it, but that's that's probably the type of play you need. You want to get the nerves. You want to get the cobwebs off. You want to kind of just forget what happened earlier. Let's get physical. Let's get some contact. So I think the ball did come out. Had a spider right there to fall. Oh, Kyle got it back himself, actually. Laying on the bottom of that pile, he reached out and grabbed it. Mike Barta, the senior safety for William & Mary, up to make that stop. So here it is now, a third down and still 17 to go. Well, let out of the shotgun. Here's the snap. Steps up in the pocket, down the middle. And the pass to Porter Abel, completed the 40, but he's surrounded by William & Mary defenders and dragged down just shy of the 41. That'll make it fourth and five, but D.J. Helkowski will come on to punt. Really just a drive that, you know, obviously the, the main play in that drive is a fumbled snap, kind of threw him off, but some positive things you see in that, you saw in that drive. Also, you see Porter Abel, uh, Deshaun, Deshaun Tibbs, uh, two fifth-year seniors getting some playing time in that first drive. Helkowski averaging 37 yards a kick. Gets a nice... Uh, End over ender, and all the way back to the 16-yard line. That kick fielded there by Jack Armstrong. Each side with the possession, and right now Kyle Laletta running the football a little bit to try to get the Spiders going. On the other side, William and Mary moving the ball on the ground as well. But at this point, we're all even, nothing, nothing. Spiders and the Tribe from Richmond. Little windy day here in Richmond. No score, William and Mary and the Spiders this afternoon from Robbins Stadium. Second possession of the game for the Tribe. Tommy McKee, little shovel pass to Noah Giles, turning the left edge, dragged down by Trey Moore and thrown forward out to the 22 of William and Mary for a nice pickup of five, second and five. Well, Chris Anderson, we got to get our luck Chevrolet keys to the game in here now that everybody's had us one series apiece and. Some of these might be pretty obvious for today's action, but both these teams have some goals to accomplish. Yeah, uh, in terms of the st Spiders, I mean, defensively, I just was going to say, you know, weather the initial storm. Uh, they're going to throw some different things at you, some new looks at you, weather that storm and kind of go from there. Offensively, it's real simple. I don't think William & Mary has the, the offensive firepower to really keep up, so make this thing a track meet. If you can get up by two scores, you're in a great situation. McKee's going deep down the field, and the ball's knocked away from Andrew Kaskin, and the Spiders have an interception off of it, do they? Almost. He dropped it loose, but Kaskin, the senior tight end downfield, who had two touchdowns against Richmond last year, covered up by Micah Keels there. Yeah, great coverage by Micah Keels. He's right there, kind of what we call cat coverage. He's right on his hip, but what I like is he makes a play for the ball. Uh, he just right in there, times it up perfectly, Receiver's hands goes up, and his hands are right there.
and to knock the ball away. So great play. So it's a third and five from the 22. McKee back to throw over the middle, fires and complete at the 31 for the first down. He finds the tight end, Kaskin, once again, and the 6'5", 240-pounder makes a big target in the middle of the field. Yeah, he's another one. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets opportunities and maybe some of the uh, uh, the All-Star games, postseasons, maybe maybe has an opportunity to go to a camp. He's just uh, kind of an old-school guy. He does a little bit of everything for the Tribe. Uh, tight end, he's in the backfield. Uh, he'll line up as a receiver, so old-school guy. Does a little bit of everything. Fake the sweep and the handoff into the middle goes Nate Evans and he is grabbed there by that spider defense. Daniel Jones in from a safety spot to help make the stop, but still a four-yard pickup, almost five actually to the 36. They're moving the ball. They're having some success running the ball. There's some missed tackles, but uh, got to give some credit to their backs, particularly Funderburg, finding a way to get into some of those smaller, their small holes. Nate Evans. Nate Evans has started the last five games. He's in that backfield. Play action fake, rolling right. McKee downfield and overthrows his intended receiver in spider territory, Daniel Kuzjak, but pressure there on McKee forced him to get rid of the football. Yeah, play action again, had a, had a deep cross. Samari Springs sees it. Probably not in the best position, but he gets he gets where he needs to be. He gets under the ball, makes the quarterback have to loft it uh, a little bit higher than he wants to, and that causes the incomplete pass. Third, third down and five. Out of the shotgun for McKee, back to throw. Sets up, fires down the middle. It's batted around and incomplete. Out of the hands of Kuzjak near midfield pass was behind him a bit and the ball knocked away for fourth down yeah good recovery the the, the receiver was definitely there uh if you're a defensive back you got to keep playing looked like uh, samari springs got in there got his hands in there pops it up that's a tip drill when that that ball gets tipped like that you hope one of those spiders come down with it but fourth down here they'll punt it away and the spiders get another opportunity and will michael will punt porter abel waits back deep at the spider 28 it's the rugby-style kick from Michael, and it's a good angle to the sideline. Takes a bounce. It's picked up by the Tribe at the Spider 34, and Richmond will start there. First and 10, but there is a flag on the play. This will be an interesting call. Looked like there was a little, uh, little acting involved here, but we'll, we'll take a look at the replay. And if it's running into the kicker, that's only a five-yard penalty, so still be short. There is no foul for running into the kicker. The and the official right says there's the no foul. Box before he kicked it. First down. Richmond. Fighters will get the football Media when we come back. We're still scoreless in Richmond. William and Mary and the Spiders from Robin Stadium this afternoon in the 128th meeting between these two in this Capital Cup showdown. So, what are you in for? <laughs> well, according to this discipline slip, I was allegedly talking during quiet time again. But there were no witnesses except the teacher's pet. Oh, really? Her testimony shouldn't be admissible. <laughs> so I'm here to appeal the decision. Oh. Fund your kid's potential. Well, I'll see you in law school, kid. <laughs> All the way through grad school. Tame the tuition monster at virginia529.com. The most important meal of the day is rarely perfect. It's not always sunny side up. Sometimes you can't afford to skip it. It's almost never served in bed. And sometimes you eat it for dinner. But as long as it's fresh, you're serving it right. That's why at Food Lion, we make fresh food affordable for everyone. Food Lion, how refreshing. Whenever you have a chance to give back to the community, it's a special day. I just had the opportunity to help a mother and her three children move into a home. So Mobile Mini is actually more than just the leader in secure storage and office rentals. We are a community player. Giving back is one of Mobile Mini's core values. It's something that's ingrained in us. I take pride in knowing that my efforts in the community is helping to make someone's life better. 
Spiders with the football at the 35. Let's uh, check in with Sean Robertson downstairs in a moment. Let's get this play in first from Richmond. Sean's got some news for us on the field. Here's the snap and the sweep to Goodall to the right side. Out to the 41 before he's chased down by Nate Atkins. And the third member of our crew this afternoon, Sean Robertson. How's it going down there on that field on this nice afternoon? become a problem uh, for the special teams as well as the team today. I had a chance to hear Russ Hughesman before the game today and with the emotion of senior day. He really didn't say much to his team this. He said if you guys play like William and Mary, so go out and win it. All right, Sean, thanks. Pass over the middle to Garrett Hudson. Dropped at the William and Mary 43. Yeah, and I can I can kind of sum up a little bit of what Sean was saying. I know we broke up a little bit, but essentially, you know, Coach Hughes been kept it short and sweet. I mean, in this type of game, this type of rival, this type of atmosphere, he said, play the way you've played all year and you'll win this game. This is one of those games as a coach, you step back, you let your seniors lead, you let your guys kind of kind of carry that momentum. Garrett Hudson on that, that would have been a great catch. He's another one who's just senior today has had a great career with the Spiders, and I expect to see him get some opportunities. already has one opportunity to play in uh, one of the All-Star games. He'll be in the NFL PA Bowl. He's gotten that opportunity already. Third down here for Richmond and three. Lalletta to throw. Rolling out. Fakes an underneath route. Now throws it down the right sideline. Jay Palmer can't get open. Was covered up nicely by safety Mike Barta. Lalletta chased out of the pocket to bring up a fourth and three. Yeah, Kyle really did a good job kind of keeping the play around and moving. Uh, receivers got to help you out a little bit. I know, uh, you know, for your running back, that's not really something he's used to doing, but you got to kind of keep it alive, get, give him a window. He wants to get rid of it. Maybe could have ran it on that one, but William and Mary does, another good, does a good job with another stop. Halkowski to punt, and Jack Armstrong, the junior wide receiver, waits deep. Pressure from the Tribe, and Halkowski just got that off. Fair catch, Armstrong, backpedaling to around the 13. Let's see where they mark it. William and Mary will start around the 14-yard line, first and 10, as these two teams continue to trade punches in the early going with no score in this rivalry showdown and senior day for the Spiders this afternoon. Yeah, we talked about it. Didn't have a lot, I get a chance to talk about it a lot, but this William and Mary defense, underappreciated, undervalued, man. They, they, they do a good job, and it's one of those defense, we said it before, you got to stop looking at the stats and cut on the video, and you'll see they've put in, been put in some difficult positions, but... They consistently, when you when you keep it, you know, all things equal, they, they, they play well, they get a good rush, uh, they do fairly well against the run, so uh, Spider's is not going to be easy for him today. Tommy McKee, the quarterback, hands to Evans, sweeping right, cuts inside a little bit out to the 15. Didn't get a whole lot there. It'll be second down, and nine is being generous after the short game. And that's what I like to see, you know, uh, guys starting to rally to the ball. And we said before, weather the storm. Once you start to get into this point, you got a quarterback with not a lot of experience. So their playbook is only going to go so deep. So after a couple drives, you start to see what they want to do, how they're going to attack you. And hopefully you'll begin to see more spiders at the, at the point of attack. Justin Rubin, one of those on the stop. There's McKee. He opened the Towson game hitting 10 of his first 11 passes last week. Out of the shotgun. Hands, the sweep left, and a cut back in by Evans, and he rolls across the 20 to the 23 as Trey Moore brings him down. But a nice run by Nate Evans, finding some running room around that left side. Yeah, really good job by Micah Keels coming up and forcing that back inside. Got to get that pursuit from your safeties and your linebacker, make that tackle a little quicker. Nate Evans has been a great addition uh, to this William & Mary backfield. He had committed to Richmond before some of the adjustment with the coaching staff and uh, he just really wanted to come in, and his, his goal was to play soon, so it looks like he made the right decision. First quarter winding down. McKee to keep it around the right end off a couple of fakes and heads to his own sideline. And Daniel Jones, the Williamsburg native, is there to make sure he goes out of bounds. But that picks up a first down. Ruben a little slow to get up for the Spiders on that play, too. Now the Spiders are really thin in those linebacker spots. So we'll you don't see. want to lose Justin Rubin, who's uh, hobbling a little bit, but he's going to stay out there. First oh. quarter is going to come to a close here in a minute as well. Looks like he's walking it off pretty good. You got Madison Day, but pretty much, yeah, we go about three deep uh, at that linebacker position. 
Wind whipping up. You can hear it out there. As the first quarter winds down, McKee with an offset eye to his right runs the draw. Evans spins off a tackle or two, and then he's hit down after a short gain. Makes it out close to the 29. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. So after one quarter of football here in the Capital Cup showdown, we're all even at nothing, nothing. Richmond and William and Mary squaring off this afternoon in the final game of this 2017 season for both. More coming up from Richmond in just a moment as we continue along on this Saturday afternoon. First quarter in the books, quarter number two underway, along with Chris Anderson, Robert Fish here, and our TV crew this afternoon. It'll be a second and nine for the Tribe at their own 29. McKee, the snap, throws downfield and incomplete along the far hash intended for Evans out of the backfield. One thing to look at here, Chris, William and Mary's rushed for 68 yards in the first quarter. And when they are able to control the football like that in this series, in their three recent wins, they've averaged 248 yards rushing. In their losses, though, only uh, 72.8 in the last 10 losses. Coach Russ Houston of the Spiders trying to keep that defense geared up today. Yeah, his 19th uh, Commonwealth Cup, so that's interesting. He's been on both sides, so he knows the importance of this rivalry. McKee on third down to the far side, almost picked off by Tafon Mainsa. Intended for Jack Armstrong, and Mainz almost came away with it as fourth down. Yeah, no doubt about it. He saw that, read that, know exactly what the receiver was trying to do. So uh, I think they wanted to come out and try him today, try to attack him, but he was he was ready for that one. Went off Armstrong into Mainz's hands, but he just couldn't quite hold on to it. You've been there? Been there, man. You <laughs> wish you could reel that one in, especially on you know senior day for him. That would have been a good one. He's got a long game, so he'll have some other opportunities. Here comes uh, Will Michael Punt. A rolling kick to the right. He's kicking with the wind at his back, and this will bounce considerably in William & Mary's favor. As the Tribe downfield to cover it up, Richmond starts back inside its own 20 with another possession in a nothing-nothing game here in the second quarter. That's a tough one if you're your punt returner with Porter Abel right there. Uh, you know, when you're dealing with a punter who kicks the traditional punt in the air, and then he comes back and he does the rugby point punch, just kind of knowing where to line up and, and how to attack that. You uh, attack that on the first bounce, and you don't get there. That's an absolute problem because, uh, you know, you touch it, you fumble. and uh, So it, it, it could be a tough decision back there. Kyle Aletta brings the offense out on the field for another series. So far, Laletta's one of three this afternoon for 12 yards out of the shotgun, runs the read and the handoff up the middle across the 20. Goes Xavier Goodall. Let's get back downfield and check in with Sean Robertson downstairs. Sean? Robert, probably no senior on the Spiders roster was more emotional about this game than quarterback Kyle Lawlada. Remember last year in the Capital Cup in Williamsburg, 
Laletta suffered a torn ACL at his knee, was lost during that playoff run, has had a great historical season for the Spiders, was ready for this opportunity to face the tribe one more time. Even mentioned to me before the game, he had 15 friends and family members here in attendance to watch his final game. Right now, Xavier Goodall taking the handoff over the left side across the 30. That'll be enough for the first down. Well, Laletta, with a win today, can move past Bob Blyer for second place in all-time wins as a spider. And I, I love that run. Just a good old down, downhill uh, run. That's the play before, but it's an ISO. Just good old-fashioned downhill run. That opens things up for Kyle Laletta. Well, there goes Goodall again, and an arm tackle brings him down across the 40. Mike Barta with the saving tackle may have shaken himself up a little bit on that as that left arm dangling a bit. I'll tell you what, when you look at a play like this, again, you're, you're just saying when you get that running attack, I know everybody wants to see Kyle Aletta have this great send-off, but when you run the ball like this, you're going to get one-on-one -on -one matchups. You're going to see things open up on the outside, and Kyle Aletta is going to flourish from that point. But right now, Xavier Goodall is giving the Tribe all they can handle. Barta saved the day with that tackle, but went out with a stinger. So Isaiah Lassiter is in there at free safety now. Might be a good spot for a pass here. A let out of the shotgun, back to throw, looking deep over the middle. Diving one-handed grab by Tyler Wilkins at the 35 for the first down around the linebacker, Armand Jones, who was isolated on the spider wideout. I'll tell you what, sometimes I think Tyler Wilkins is just showing off. He gets, he gets a one-arm, one-hand catch right here, but he seems to get one every game. So it's just become a part of his repertoire. I mean, it's a great catch, but i got to be honest, we're not super surprised he's made that type of catch before. Makes another one right there. Wilkins up on the play. Shaking up on that play a little bit, yeah. The 6'3 junior from right here in Richmond. Came into today a fourth in the CAA with 853 yards receiving. Earlier in the game, I wanted to point this out, too. I mentioned that uh, William Mary was playing without Chris Duran as Wilkins makes his way off the field. Chris Duran actually was in on that first series. He's the lineman that came off, and he's down here trying to ride the bike and loosen up. So he's been injured a lot this year, and he has tried to work his way back out there. Of course, he's a senior as well trying to play in this final game for Absolutely. the try. Absolutely. And you see Wilkins coming off on his own power, but he, he definitely doesn't look good. I don't know. We'll get an update from Sean a little bit later. Uh, more opportunities for Porter Abel and Deshaun Tibbs, those, those fifth-year seniors. Here's the snap to Lawletta, the handoff to Jay Palmer over the right side, powering his way, eventually stopped at the 27, but a nice run from Jay Palmer over the right side in his first action today. Tell you what, again, you know, this has been a defense that's just done well. They've been tough against the run, but we're seeing some bodies moving there. Garrett Hudson in there on the block. We talk about his rec receiving ability all the time, but he's a great you know, physical attribute, has some great physical attributes at tight end. Hole opens up right there. Got to appreciate that. Spiders with 81 total yards. Tribe with 88. Second and two from the Tribe 27. No score. William & Mary missed a field goal on its opening drive. Here's the snap. Lalletta with play action. Under pressure. Rolling out. Chased. Tripped up. Almost got away. And the fourth guy finally got a piece of him and dropped him all the way back to the 38. It had a lot of pressure on that one. Helmet loss, and one of the Tribe players has to leave the field. Will Kiley made the stop eventually as... It looked like that one of the uh, Joe Suarez's his helmet came off, so he does have to leave the field. But they get the sack and make it third and 13 from the Spider 38 for the Spider senior Kyle Laletta here. This Tough afternoon what, against this defense so far. You've got to be glad you have Kyle Laletta. He makes it you know, third and 13 for a lot of people is impossible. Let's we'll see if we can get this done. It's, it's been manageable so, so, sometime, at some points this year. Laletta to throw, looking over the middle. Hits Abel on the cross. He's brought down around the 28 by Rayshon Smith. And that'll be fourth and short. Not enough for the first down. Yeah, and they're going to kick into the wind if you have to kick here, too, Chris. Yeah, I don't see the field goal team running off. Oh, here they come. I was going to be, uh, do you give Griffin Trow a shot, or do you go ahead and, you know, see if you can go for the, go for the first down? Looks a little bit too long. You're looking at four and three. So they're going to give uh, Griff a shot. I think they were taking a look at what you just said. He's kicking into the wind. But I think he's uh, you're lined up right in the middle. Griff looked strong in pregame. We talked about that earlier, so hopefully he drills this one. Joe Mancuso, the holder, the backup quarterback, 
This kick is fading and doesn't make it all the way to the crossbar. So the Tribe will hold on that. Would have been a long for Griffin Trow of almost 45 yards. Yeah, he's angry. He's upset. Uh, this would have been a deep one. And you got to look 40 for not just 45 yards, but 45 yards into the win. So that would have been a tough kick. Each side with a missed field goal. We're still scoreless from Robin Stadium in the Capital Cup battle, the 128th edition of this rivalry. At the University of Richmond, we offer flexible and affordable degrees to help busy adults advance their careers. Earn your bachelor's or master's degree part-time at a pace that supports your schedule and a price that supports your budget. Visit us online to learn more. Some trends are so influential, they can move entire sectors of the market. Take the price of oil. It has the potential to impact the performance of all energy companies. So why continue to take single stock risk? The Energy Sector Spider ETF offers the diversification of the entire energy sector while minimizing your single stock exposure. The Energy Sector Spider, the next chapter in investing. Before investing, consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Go to sectorspiders.com for a prospectus containing this information. Read it carefully. This time of year, dinner isn't always served on time. It's not always on a plate. Sometimes it's cold. It can't break your budget. And it's not always eaten at the table. But as long as it's fresh, you're serving it right. That's why at Food Lion, we make fresh food affordable for everyone. Food Lion, how refreshing. It's never too late to return to school. Whether you're 25 or 55, the right college degree can make a career change possible. Earn your degree part-time in a high-demand field at a pace that supports your schedule and a price that supports your budget. Ten twenty-nine left here until halftime. A scoreless battle so far here between the Tribe and the Spiders. McKee motions Giles back to a running back position and then hands off to him as he cuts through the middle, finds running room to the 35, flag down as he hits the 40, and all the way out to the 47, brought down there by Jones, but there is a flag back at that 35-yard line, and it could be holding. Holding. Offense. Number 15. 10-yard penalty. First down. So holding on the Tribe. Listen up, guys. Could a woman be pregnant with your child right now? If you aren't married to the child's mother, your rights as a father could be at risk. Register with the Virginia Birth Father Registry before or within 10 days of the child's birth. Visit www.vabirthfatherregistry.com. So the holding call nullifies uh, what was a nice game that time by the tribe on the running play, but came but, up empty with it. Yeah, if you look at the way the... Uh, the spider defense has been performing, particularly that uh, that front four. You, you kind of knew something was going on. Uh, great run, but, yeah, you knew there was a hold. Out of the shotgun for McKee. Swing it out of the backfield, overthrew Evans on the far side at the numbers. And that will bring up a second down now off of that play. Second down long, again, not where they want to be. Uh, this is where they look to their, their, their tight end to make some plays. Uh, he's got had a couple catches today. So we'll see what they do on this one. Yeah, I'm hoping to get a stop here. You can change up the field position. That would be a, a good battle at this point from the Richmond perspective there. Shotgun. McKee sweeping around the right end and is swallowed up and thrown down by Brandon Waller back at the 23. A loss of two. And that'll take us now to... A third down, and looks like 17. Third and 17, right where the Spiders want to be. I think you, you'll definitely see those guys up front. Ears pinned back, ready to go. And we'll see if they uh, take the opportunity to blitz here and, and force the quarterback to throw a short pass and then just let your DBs make the tackle. Third down from the 24. Back to throw McGee out of the backfield and McGee hits Evans and he's hit right away by Keels and stopped. He got a yard. It'll be fourth down. That'll force the punt. Well, that is textbook. You can't coach it much better than that. Comes up 
gets his feet hot, breaks down, gets his face across the front, makes a tackle. He made it look easy, but I'm telling you, people, in space, this is a tough play. Check so that out right key there. now, 3 of 11. He started 10 of 11 last week against Towson, so not off to as good a start for the Tribe this week. And the offense had been making strides over these last couple of weeks for William & Mary. High floating kick, nice kick from, from Michael. Drives Abel back at the 23 with an over-the-shoulder catch. Tries to find running room on the left side. Got a seam. Hits the 45. Flag down as he spins across the 44. But there's a flag back at the Richmond 39. That's going to nullify a great return by Porter Abel there. That was a great return. And really, the catch itself was impressive because uh, the punter boomed that one. Holding on the return team, number 21. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So from the spot of the foul, the penalty takes place. And Sean Robertson downstairs has an update on the status of Tyler Wilkins. Sean. Robert, wide receiver core for the Spiders has taken a hit this afternoon. Tyler Wilkins has suffered an injury to his PCL in his right knee and will not return. We thought it was a calf injury or a cramp on the initial hit, but uh, talking to the doctors and also to Tyler at the training table, he will not return with an injury to his PCL in his right knee. So that takes Wilkins out. Deshaun Brissett was already out. There's Wilkins on the table. A junior certainly frustrated that he can't be out there the rest of today. Good all sweeping right, flags fly. Tribe jumped on the play up front. We'll see what the penalty is as there's little to no gain on that run by Goodall. That's funny. We've talked about the depth of this uh, this core of wide receivers for the Spiders all year long, but we haven't had any injuries. Uh, we had Brissett last week, uh, and now we have Tyler Wilkins. Uh, PCL, not, not, you never want to see anybody get injured, but I tell you what, I'll take a PCL over an ACL any day. Uh, PCL will keep him out of this game, maybe out a couple weeks. Uh, ACL All is side. obviously a dis different Defense. situation. Number 58, five-yard penalty. All right, Sean, what else have you got for us? Just like you were talking about, if you suffer any type, I guess, ligament injury in your knee, it would be the PCL, and that's exactly what Tyler said at the training table. He said, you know, it is an injury, but I'd rather have it to be a PCL as opposed to an ACL or an MCL. So Laletta, 3 of 5 this afternoon now. We'll have to work shy a couple of receivers. He'll run out of the jumbo, handoff to Palmer right side, and Jay brought down by Matt Ahola, part of that Tribe defense who's been very successful up front, out to the 38, and this will be now after the offside penalty against the Tribe, a second and one. You can see the Spiders are just really committed to the run today. Haven't taken a lot of shots downfield. Uh, this will be second and short. Traditionally, this is where Kyle likes to take a lot of shots. Second and short because he feels like if he doesn't get it, he can come back and pick it up on third down. Simpson and Tibbs to the right. Drake to the left. And a handoff there. Laletta rolling right, rather, and dumps it out to Tibbs in the flat far side. He's up the right sideline. And across the 50 to the William & Mary 49 for the first down. And you're seeing excitement on the sideline there because you got Deshaun Tibbs. He's a senior captain who, who honestly would, would play or, or start for most teams in the CAA and probably most FCS teams in the country. Just happens to be behind three, three uh, you know, receivers who all have over 800 yards. But the team loves him. They respect him. He's an outstanding leader, and they're excited to see him get a catch in this last game. No score in the game. First and ten Spiders. Play action. Pass tipped out into the flat. Eventually caught by Stefan Jacob. He steps out of bounds at the 48. He got a yard off that deflected pass. It'll be second and nine. Yeah, that ball's not tipped, and he's got a little room to run because he wasn't really covered. Linebacker doesn't make it out there. Uh, so good job by the uh, defensive end for the Tribe getting his hands on that because if it doesn't get tipped, Stefan might still be running. That's Josh Delaney. I think I've got a piece of it. So it's second and nine. Here's the snap. Laletta looks downfield. Under pressure, flag down. And now Laletta pulled down in the backfield. Good pressure in there that time. From Looked like Joe Suarez again, but there was a flag on the play. Looks like the Tribe was offside, so I think that's why Kyle was holding the ball, seeing if he could take a deep shot. Might have been Suarez, who seemed to get an early jump from that right defensive end spot. Offside, in the neutral zone at the snap, number 90, defense. Actually, it was Five Will Kiley. 
Second down. 6'3 freshman. 260 pounder. So the offside penalty will push it out to the William & Mary 43. So you see Laletta just kind of understanding the game, understanding, hey, I got a free play. Held the ball probably longer than he normally does, hoping to get a shot off downfield. Snap to Laletta, looking here near side. Hits Drake on the inside route. And Drake pulled down at the 35. Tackle made by Denzel Dykes. And that's a Richmond first down. It looks like William and Mary is trying to, you know, kind of the, the same code we've seen every team do uh, probably since the Delaware game, which is, hey, you know, if Kyle Laletta is going to beat us, he's not going to beat us deep. So uh, really buckling down. You see they have safeties and corners deep, so he's going to have to go these underneath routes and let his receivers make plays for him. First and 10 at the 35. Double tight end set for the Spiders. Good all the lone setback and maybe a change in the play here. Fake the handoff, roll right. Looking downfield, hits Jacob underneath. Hits the far sideline, and Jacob passed the sticks. Down to the William & Mary 24 for a first down on the nice toss underneath the defense. I'll tell you what, man, this is a coach's dream. You talk about football IQ. Kyle sees something at the line, makes the audible, finds the open receiver right now, gets it out easy first down. He, again, a play that he makes look easy, but I'm telling you, it, it, it could take years for a, an offensive coordinator to get his quarterback to understand the concept of what they're seeing, come to the line, make the adjustment, and then make the play. William & Mary came into today allowing only 322.9 total yards on defense. That's fifth in the CAA. Handoff Goodall makes a nice cut up the middle across the 20 and gets down to the 18. Good strong run from Goodall there. Yeah, definitely. And I know everybody's kind of running a spread concept these days, and, and we ran a lot of that. But if you've seen the last couple games, we're doing a lot of downhill running, giving those offensive linemen a chance to do what they, what they want to do. They get a chance to come off the ball and be physical, and it's really uh, improved our running game the last few games. Good all, a sophomore from Henrico takes the handoff over the right side. Got some room to the 10, to the 5. Cuts to the middle, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Spiders. Second touchdown rushing for Xavier Goodall this season. Smell that end zone, young man. They gave him a great hole right at the line. And once he gets to that second level, you can see there's no, uh, no doubt about it. He wants to get to the house. And a good cut in the middle of the field. Got around a couple of Tribe defenders. Spiders had a few blocks downfield for him as well to take the 6-0 edge. Griffin Trow for the point after. And he will slam that through the uprights, and Richmond takes the first lead of the day for either side. Xavier Goodall with the carry, and gets the Spiders downfield and into the end zone. 7-0 Richmond on top of William & Mary. More from Robin Stadium here in just a moment on this Saturday afternoon. Every great community started with a vision. Someone looked at what was and dreamed of what could be. And while Lakewood is known for gracious retirement living, we're expanding to bring a new vision to Richmond's West End. You'll find many choices with five new dining venues and a variety of culinary styles. It's a new era in West End retirement living. For details, go online or call 804-655-0939. Lakewood, live the life you envision. Lux Chevrolet is the Chevy truck expert, period. If you use your truck for work, for play, or both, then go where the truck guys go. Lux Chevrolet in Ashland. A big selection of trucks on the ground and inbound. Frustrated with deceptive pricing that excludes destination fees or non-qualified rebates? Buy with confidence at Luck, where there are no hidden fees, upfront and honest pricing, and trustworthy employees. Go to LuxChevrolet.com to see how much you can save. Shopping for a Chevy car or truck? Buy it from Luck. Lux Chevrolet, the Chevy truck experts. It's a great time to be a fan when you can come in the Buffalo Wild Wings and catch the best moments in sports. Unlike in Roman times, when you can become the sport. Is this Section G? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh-oh. Ow. Get the ultimate sports experience at Buffalo Wild Wings. Spider offense finds the end zone. Xavier Goodall with the touchdown run, an 18-yard carry, and did the bulk of the work during that drive, did Goodall, who now has nine carries for 69 yards. 
I'll tell you what, his growth and development as a back has really been impressive this year. Uh, and, and you talked to Coach Huseman, it had a lot to do with just his ability to pass protect, never his ability to run. So get him the ball in his hands. Now he's got the pass blocking down. He's got a bright future. The Cherison kickoff goes out of bounds on the far side as Nate Evans let it bounce over there and let it roll out. So the Tribe will get some good field position out of this. Now, so important for William & Mary today, Chris, to not fall behind by too big a margin. They've done a good job early trying to control the tempo of this game, if you will. But now they've got to produce. They missed a field goal earlier, and they want to Free keep this out within reach. They really don't want kick to get too team. far behind. Ball be placed I think the, the spiders, too, that's something we've talked about all line. year long. There's First not many down. offenses that can, that can run with the spider offense. So um, that's something that we've talked about but, but have rarely been able to do, and that's get up by two scores, particularly two touchdowns. If you can make that happen, uh, we're a tough team to, to, to try to track down and come after. And now that this defense is clicking on all cylinders, it makes it even harder. Here's McKee. Little play action under pressure, and Waller beats his block and knocks McKee down back at the 28-yard line. He just blew right past the offensive lineman that time. It might have been Brooks Norris, and Waller just flew into the backfield. Actually got by Dan Evers, a redshirt freshman at right tackle. One of those sacks where everybody in the stadium saw it coming except for the quarterback. McKee just didn't see him coming, and uh, i tell you what, it, Waller is just super fast coming off the edge. Another guy I'd like to see him go to that pro day, and he's going to get an opportunity to show his stuff too. Six and a half sacks now on the season for Waller. Makes it second and 17. McKee play actions again. Throws a nice route here to the near side, and the catch at the 45. And the tackle made by Micah Keels on the reception by Isaiah Kinder, and he'll get the first down there. That's right a, at the sticks. Yeah, it's a tough route to cover. He comes all the way from the other side. Put a little air under that. You hope Michael Kills can get to that one, but that's a tough route to cover when he's coming all the way from the other side dragging. It's one of those uh, scheme routes almost, isn't it? It is. Kind of scheme yourself open there. Yeah, uh, and what you're, you're banking on being able to give your, your quarterback time and the receiver time to get to the other side of the field. Little inside handoff, stutter step, and down goes Evans at the 45. Nice play by Daniel Jones, the sophomore from Williamsburg out of Bruton High School, up from the safety spot. I tell you what, I, I like to see that. We have a lot of youth uh, on the back end of this defense, and, and they've kind of been on and off with their tackles. Some games are on, some games are off. This is a good sign by Daniel Jones. Sticks his nose in there, face across the front, and, and, and the big thing is back doesn't even get a chance to fall forward. That's tough to do. That's a big play by him. 2.50 left in the half, a 7-0 spider advantage. Of course, Jones from Bruton right in Williamsburg, right in William & Mary's backyard. Screen pass set up, McKee chase from behind. He's going to run to the middle of the field now, and right up the middle, ball comes out, but he was down across the Richmond 45 to the 43. Nice play by McKee there to avoid the pressure, and now Andrew Clyde is up and limping off the field for the Spiders. Back there at the 40-yard line. Another spider down near the tackle, but here's another look at McKee. And Clyde got taken out by his own teammate there, it looks like. Like Keels is also down. Yeah, Clyde is a tough one. <clears throat> We've seen him go, go down several times, and he, he always finds a way to come back in. Ooh, Mike Keels. He got rolled oh. up on from behind. You saw the replay. Yeah, there. that's a tough one. It's, it's a physical game. Bodies flying, and uh, you could just see he, he was there on the tackle and just kind of got rolled up. I think they're asking, they might be asking for the cart there. Let's hope not, but Keels is down. and you know, He's a junior out of Washington by way of Fork Union. He's moved into that dimes position. The cart is coming out on the field. And, boy, the last thing you want to see is an injury any time of the year. But Spiders are gathered around down there, Madison Day, Justin Rubin. So we might get a look at Jacob Roberson in there. Looks like they're taking a look at his his ankle as well. I thought it was more of a knee, but it looks like they're taking a look at his ankle. He just got rolled up. It's, it's one of those, you see him in football all the time, and every time you see it, you're just, you never like it. Uh, and you can see his, uh, his teammates are concerned, as they should be, and uh, you just take a knee and you just kind of wait for, wait for the word on your brother. At this point, Richmond has a 7-0 advantage. 
Of course, the injury on the back end of this play nullify what was a, doesn't nullify it, but takes away from what was a great run by Tommy McKee there, who has the ability to run the football. He has 390 yards and four touchdowns rushing. Yeah, he did some damage to, uh, when he played Towson, he did some damage, and <clears throat> even with his success from his passing, a lot of that was set up by his feet. You know, he's able to take off and run, um, find some holes within the defense, and then, you know, kind of run to set up the pass. Uh, you know, it wasn't the traditional running with the back. It was running with their quarterback, so. The Spider defense so far this afternoon, the Tribe has 117 total yards. Brandon Waller picking up his, uh, what are six and a half sacks on the season with one here. As you take a look at that, got right around the tackle's block. Good pressure from Waller. A 6'4", 255-pounder, redshirt senior. Yeah, I think overall they've kind of, uh, William and Mary has done a fair job of keeping the Spider defense off balance, but the Spiders are making plays when they need to make plays. That was a great one by uh, by Daniel Jones on that one. We saw the Waller coming off the edge. Uh, so at, at the end of the day, you know, in terms in terms of uh, athleticism, no doubt about it, I think the Spiders have an adva advantage. They just have to continue to make plays. Well, they're looking for more than just the cart because now – uh, over here to the right, they're bringing the, the gurney out and the stretcher's coming out for Micah Keels. And so they still tend to him here in the middle of the field. I tell you, you hate to see this. You know, you, you look at his face, he has a look more of, more of concern than, than pain. And, um, you know, sometimes with, with those injuries, that, that, that could be, that's, that's the feeling you have. I've been there. It's an awkward position. Uh, you hate it because you're, you're thinking about not just the injury, but you're thinking about your future. You just have one of those moments where you're thinking about everything. So we're hoping he's okay. Plenty of care out there. All the doctors and trainers, coaches out there checking on him. Russ Huseman, first year with Richmond, has not gone the way he would have wanted it to, I'm sure. And Jimmy Laycock also. It's been a tough year, Chris, for, for the Tribe. I never thought we'd be, you know, at this point in the season and, and see a, a Tribe team that, that has had some of the things that they've had to deal with with their record, 0-7, and, and their offense uh, ranked low in the CAA. It's just not a typical trait for William & Mary, but, it know, has they, you know, they're going to bounce back at some point, especially offensively. Well, I, you look at both sides of the ball, you know, just doing a little research on the, on the Tribe team, you know, look at both sides of the ball. It, there's a youth movement. They are young on both sides of the ball. They have some seniors up front on that defense, but outside of that, you know, uh, they need to find a quarterback. They need to, you know, find some offense, which I'm sure Coach Laycock will figure out a way to do that. So uh, definitely not worried about the Tribe. They'll be fine. Uh, they remind me a lot of maybe Towson this year or Elon team last year where, you know, we went down there and we beat them pretty good, but I remember the guys on the bus saying, man, this, there's a bunch of freshmen and sophomores out there that battle pretty good. They're going to be good in a year or two. And we saw that with Elon two years ago, and now you see them having the success this year. And um, same thing, Towson looking to improve. They're getting much better. I think they're going to have a great team next year. So I look at William and & Mary, and they remind me of that type of team. Uh, in terms of the Spiders, you talked about Coach Hughes, but no, not, not the season – that you expected. What I've learned is that you know, it, it's very difficult to come into a team that's senior laden, uh, that has a, an expectation for success, and, and just trying to implement so much, uh, so many changes. You know, new defense, new schemes. So as we look at Keels, make his way onto the stretcher. Well, the Spiders have a seven nothing lead, and Keels will be uh, taken off on the Kearney, and now the whole Spider team comes out. This is Jay Palmer with a good run during that drive to set the touchdown up the nice pass here to Caleb Drake the entire spider bench by the way coming out onto the field to talk to Mike Akeel so if you ever wanted to wonder about camaraderie and the team staying together here's a good example of it right here even if you didn't have the season you thought you should have uh, these guys don't quit and they are you know the hashtag is one Richmond you're seeing it right there I tell you what and that's one of those scenes you you appreciate you respect you actually see the love and the camaraderie between the guys, but you hate it. You, you hate when you have to see it because that means somebody was, you know, uh, injured and uh, injured pretty good. Um, so we'll we'll get more info as, as things roll out, and we'll, we'll see uh, what this all means for Michael Keels as we roll down the line. But again, you know, the camaraderie between the between he and his teammates is, is outstanding. So Keels 
Uh, we'll keep an eye on that situation, and if we do get any further word, we'll pass it along to you. But obviously getting handshakes from his teammates, and uh, they will tend to him, and hopefully things will progress as best they can as in the days going forward for his injury. Looks like they put the cast on that leg. So not gonna guess, but we know it's we know it's some type of lower leg injury. Talked about the emotion of senior day and Keels of course a junior, but uh, there's plenty of emotion right here in that shot. Love these spider fans on their feet clapping. They know how hard it is, how difficult it is to, to be out there, you know, battling and fighting, and how upsetting it is to uh, to go down with an injury. Keels was making his 18th start and his 38th career start coming into today. We'll check in with Sean Robertson in just a moment as Keels rolls off. Okay. Sean, what do you got for us down there? Well, Robert, I briefly got a chance to talk to Russ Hughes, and I said, what did you say to Keels down on the field? And he looked at me and smiled, and he was like, does it hurt? And Keels said, yeah, it hurts a lot. And he kind of gave like a little smile when he said it. Deep pass downfield, and a battle at the goal line, and here comes one of those flags. And it's on Tafon Mainsa again for pass interference at the goal line on the intended pass downfield for William and Mary, the intended receiver, Jordan Lowry. Keels knocks it away, but maybe got a little bit too handsy Pass in there, Chris. Yeah, Tafon Manson getting Number a little three. grabby. Uh, I think he stumbled a little bit. I can tell you, as a defensive back, you, you stumble, it, it makes you nervous. So he, he stumbles, gets grabby, and, and, and commits the penalty down there. Overall, wasn't it bad position? You see maybe that left arm on the right arm of the receiver. Keels, uh, not Keels, but uh, Mainsa with his right hand knocking the ball away. And we talked about it before. He's, he's had a few of those this season. So after a while, you start to get a little reputation. You can see those refs almost, you know, hand on, hand on that yellow cloth ready to pull it. First and 10, Tribe Waller with the tackle brings Giles down in the backfield and a loss back to the 32. Now Giles had started the first five games for the Tribe. He had three carries and 74 yards and a touchdown against James Madison. Five carries and 51 yards against Towson, but he doesn't get very far there. He's a tough back, and I think what William & Mary has been trying to do is just get as many talented athletes on the field at once. So he's been playing some positions for the Tribe. It's a red shirt freshman out of Suffolk. 147 and a half, 7-0 Richmond. McKee back to throw. To the out route here, the Armstrong catch, mains to the tackle of the 23. Armstrong still in bounds. You, to go back to what we talked about earlier during that little break, 14 offensive players this year have made their first career starts for William & Mary. Wow. So that's a lot of juggling that you have to do as we look at McKee's pass here again. So and he got, showed last week he can get hot at any time. Right. With the way he played against Towson early in the game. McKee the snap. Looking in the middle of the field, and the pass incomplete down at the 15 intended for Kuzjak. Yeah, Spiders caught a break there. It looks like a miscommunication between Kuzjak and McKee. Uh, I think Kuzjak decides to sit. McKee thinks he's going to keep running, uh, but he was definitely open. Spiders got a break there. They'll try. Uh, Tribe's going to try another field goal here. This time, difference is there's little to no win. If anything, they've got the win to their back, unlike the last field goal attempt. Chris Hooper has a 41-yard for a long field goal. 7 of 14 after his first quarter miss on the opening drive. Spiders up 7-0 from the near hash. This will be a 39-yarder. He's got plenty of leg to it, and he'll drill it right through the middle of the uprights. So the field goal good, and the Tribe pulls to within 7-3 now with 102 still left in this first half. Pass interference penalty sets up the field goal, and Hooper's got plenty of leg to bang that through. And so for the Tribe, they... Pulled it within four. You know, last week at Towson, Chris, William and Mary had their first first half lead since September 16th when they played Bucknell. I read that. I they read had the that. The lead at half, and Again. they haven't had it since then. And 
they don't have it yet at this point, but they are at least uh, in the game right now. So Yeah, I read that. And again, you're talking about a young team, uh, and they came out, weren't, weren't able to hold the lead in the second half. But, but they're getting better every week. They're doing some things. I, I think what they're doing well right now is just kind of maintaining the ball, holding the ball. Because uh, we all know if, if you give Kyle Loletta, and I know he's down Brissett, and now he's down Tyler Wilkins, but he is still the man. If you give him enough touches, uh, enough time with that ball, he's going to eat you up. And so they're just trying to run as much clock as they, as they can. They're taking their time. Uh, Kyle Loletta in the offense will get the ball with one minute, and we'll see if they're able to, able to do anything with it, maybe get into Griffin Trow uh, space and get him a field goal opportunity. The key is 6 of 15 for 45 yards. Loletta 7 of 9 for 78. High short kick by Hooper. Abel in the middle of the field. Up the near hash into the pile and pushes that around the 30 and then eventually down he goes across that 30 yard line. I like the way Porter Abel is just catching it and hitting the hole with confidence. You can tell he's playing like this is his last game. He's had some opportunities at receiver, has some opportunities on punt returns and kick returns. So doing well. Again, we'll get Kyle Letter with 55 seconds in that offense out here. Usually comes down to the first couple plays. Can you get a first down? Can you get across that 50? That really de determines the pace uh, of how you, you know, how you progress from that point. Abel, of course, a quarterback in high school. His dad, the coach in Washington and Lee. Coming out of Lexington was Abel. Here's Laletta, though, with the 55 seconds remaining. Hands off to Goodall, sweeping right. Bill Murray out there to cut the play off, along with Isaiah Stevens in pursuit and Gavin Johnson. So not much running room at all that time for the sophomore Goodall on this carry. Yeah, interesting call. Interesting call on first down. You can tell Kyle Letta's a little frustrated. He, he wanted to get an opportunity to do something, but when you run it and uh, he's hit, doesn't give, have a chance to get out of, out of bounds. So, you know, even with three timeouts, I think you're in a tough situation. Looks like they're just going to play for halftime. Aleta looks to the sideline and wants to get a signal there as he sets up. Good all to his right. Sweeps good all left on the handoff, trying to get a seam and across the 35 to the 36. And the Spiders will be content to go to halftime with a 7 3 lead as the clock will wind down on the end of this first half. So, an interesting half indeed, Chris, as we see both teams uh, slug this one out. Yeah, slow half. You can just tell, uh, the, you know, the Spiders want to make this a track meet. Uh, you know, if, we, if, if we're using the track and field analogy, they, they're definitely slowing it down. Let's check in with uh, Sean Robertson, who has uh, Coach Usman on our Buffalo Wild Wings halftime interview. Thanks, Robert. Coach, Coach, up seven to three. I know some plays that you would like to have back in the opening 30 minutes. What did you like so far? Well, we kept them out of the end zone defensively. Uh, I don't know if we're playing great. They got some seams in there, but, uh, you know, we, we're going to have to play a little bit better on defense. And then, obviously, offensively, I don't think we're playing very very good right now. Uh, we're running the ball pretty effectively, which is good. Now, if we can start throwing the football, uh, really help us out here. But uh, we knew this was going to be a dog fight. It's always El – William Mary Richmond's always a dog fight. I know you had some emphasis on the running game in the second quarter. Do you think the win probably played a factor in that decision? Well, you know, we were we got to try to establish a run every week, and, and we're, we were popping some. We are getting six, seven, eight, nine yards, and, and so if, if you can run the football, then we'll continue to run the football. Thanks, Coach. Good luck to you in the second half. Thank you. Robert Richmond up 7-3, to three, but as you can tell, not too happy about the results at this point. The defensive struggle so far. Xavier Goodall is averaging 6.6 .6 yards a carry. The Spiders with 145 yards of total offense. But these two teams having a little difficulty finding the scoreboard except for Xavier Goodall's big run to put the Spiders ahead early. And the Tribe answered with a field goal as we go 7-3 at the half here in Richmond.
senior squad that's playing their final game here at Robbins Stadium. Richmond was probably my best experience and my best growth I've ever had um, coming in as a freshman to leaving as a senior. And it just taught me basically that I know how to fight adversity, um, how to fight for what you want, fight for what you believe in, and it's an honor and a privilege to be able to wear Richmond across your chest. Yeah, when I look back on my time at Richmond, it's, it's really the people that stand out. You know, it's the people that, you know, made this place feel like home, uh, helped deal with the homesickness and all that. And, you know, you develop a new family here and you got, you know, I still think of the guys who were, you know, five years ahead of me and Jacob Ruby, Mark Spear, the guys who kind of took me under their wing and showed me how to do things. And uh, I've had probably 10 or 15 roommates from this team and you know, that just brings you together in a way that I don't really think anything else does. Um, you know, carpooling the workouts at five in the morning before you go to work in the summer. You know, all that, that struggle really just brings you together and tightens up relationships in a way that I don't think I would have had. It's been crazy. Time flies. Um, five years here, I couldn't ask for a better five years with the team I've played with. I've seen places and had opportunities I never would have had, um, and those are things I can, you know, I'd definitely stick with me. Uh, playing on college game day, playing across the country, and uh, just the wide range of crazy football experiences um, that I've had that are just so unique. That's what's really going to stick with me. Who could say they've been to North Dakota State? Who could say they've played at Eastern Washington? Who could say they beat JMU on college game day? Um, to be able to go to the quarterfinals twice, semifinals once, and just be able to look back and just look at the career that we've led and talk about leaving a legacy and leaving a place better than you found it. I think that my group, of, my class did that. So I'm very blessed. It definitely shapes your, your work ethic. If you're gonna make it here, then you're gonna develop a set of skills that will take you really far in life. So you say there's like 95 people on the team, but every year you gain another 20. So I've been here for four and a half, five years, so I've gained at least a number of relationships that I just, I, like, my, I still talk to people that were here, seniors, that I, my, my freshman year, and to be able to be now in their shoes and see freshmen come in and exceed and just see them grow is gonna be like astonishing just because I'll see all those relationships that I built and just see them flourish and keep in contact with all the guys on the team. And there's just so many different type of people in that room that you know it just brings us even closer. We, we're literally brothers for life. Being a spider, uh, involves being someone of high standards, um, athletically, academically, and in all areas of your life, um, a hard worker, um, someone who's dependable, and someone who, when given the opportunity, is going to, you know, they're going to go after it, and they're going to be successful because we won't be denied. Hmm. Being a spider means more than just playing a sport or going to school. It's like a, it's a family, and we know that everyone has each other's backs, and that when your back's against the wall, you can look right or left, and someone's going to be right there with you. The Senior Day Thoughts of Patrick Klebert and Deshaun Tibbs and others on Senior Day, 18 seniors for the Spiders today. 7-3 Richmond, more of the Lumber Liquidators halftime report when we come back in just a moment to Robin Stadium.
Lumber Liquidators halftime report continuing from Robbins Stadium along with Chris Anderson and uh, Sean Robertson on the sidelines and our entire crew, Robert Fish here. The Spiders and the Tribe locked up in a defensive struggle today as we take a look at it. A 7-3 to three game right now. And, Chris, as you look at the first half highlights, uh, the Spiders moving the ball a little bit at times, but just not quite able to one good drive there. Xavier Goodall, some good rushes in the first half, trying to find a way to get him loose in the second half. Yeah, I mean, they're running the ball, uh, and they've had some success, like Coach Usman said. But I think, you know, I think everybody's here, and I think, you know, the final game for Kyle Aletta, uh final game for a lot of these guys, you, you wanted to see him open. You're hoping to see him open it up a little bit. Maybe we'll see more of that in the second half. Bottom line, it's been a slugfest. You don't really want to be in a slugfest when you're the team with more talent because you're giving the other the te- other team an opportunity to hang around. And uh, let's see if we open it up a little bit coming in the second half. Well, that was the whole point, too, that we talked about in the pregame. Uh, William & Mary wants to keep this game close. They want to run the football. They've, they've done some things offensively in the last couple of games that have shown some improvement on their end. Ride on the defense and see if they can get their defense to control this game. And Richmond's defense has been playing well in the last four or five games. But the whole key for this for the Spiders was to try to get out, get ahead early, get a big lead. And so far, we're at 7-3 to three at halftime. Yeah, we were hoping that would happen. I mean, we've been waiting for the track meet that we talked about, to, especially against a team like this. They're young. Uh, they're, they're run-dominated. Can you get up? And we can still do that if you can come out here and get a touchdown right off the bat. Uh, I just want to see a lot of energy, uh, which we've had all game. Uh, and then, you know, uh, hopefully the play calling will, mat- will, will match the intensity and the energy that the guys are, are, are showing on the field. And we just go ahead and put it all together, man, for this second half uh, and just send these senior- seniors out the right way, see if we can put a couple touchdowns on the board. What is the key now for the offense? If you want, you've lost a couple of receivers, one in this game uh, as uh, Wilkins went out. So how do you how do you get Lawletta going? He's he's done a good job in the first half, but needs to do just a little bit more. Take the training wheels off. <laughs> Let that man do what he does. Um, you know, I, I think you've established a run. I think, you know, I'm not saying stop the run. You're still going to need to run because uh, that's going to open things up. But 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 let that man kind of do what he does, what he's done for four years, and, and just go from there. All right, we'll find out how that goes in just a little bit. Our halftime continues from Richmond. Lumber Liquidators halftime report. 7-3, Richmond with the advantage as we continue with more from Robin Stadium. Just a couple of minutes. Seven three spiders. Let's go down to Sean Robertson, who has tribe head coach Jimmy Laycock. 
All right, here with head coach Jimmy Laycock. We were talking during the break. Uh, you were pleased with how you guys was playing on both sides of the ball, even though you're trailing 7-3. to three. Yeah, you know, we're down 7-3. But, you know, we're playing hard. You know, obviously, defensively, we're playing very well. Uh, you know, we got to do a little bit better job against the run. Uh, you know, they, I think they kind of got us a little bit by surprise by running the ball as much as they have. But, you know, we, we get adjust to that. Offensively, we're moving the ball. We're, we're just not being as consistent. We had the one big holding penalty that's, that's, that really hurt us there. But, uh, you know, it's... It, it, we're, we're doing okay. What would you like to see from McKee in the second half? I'd like to see him to continue to be decisive in his throwing game. You know, some of those ones we saw in the first half, he did get the ball launched on time, and we had a chance and made a play and got a pass interference down. That's what I want to see. And then also, you know, he's a good runner, and he just has to know the difference when to get that ball thrown on time and when to pull it down and go. Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck to you in the All second right. half. Take care. Head coach Jimmy Laycock, Tribe trailing 7-3 to as we start the third quarter. Robert and Chris, back to you. All right, take a look at some of these numbers, uh, Chris, and you look at uh, the total yards, which we talked about, the passing yards and the rushing yards. Uh, Spider's a little more balanced in there, but as we look at them, Chris, we see that it may be a little bit of a surprise from Richmond with the 78 yards passing. A couple of folks have talked about that at the half, 7 of 9 from Loletta. Uh, maybe we see, you know, and again, you've got uh, Wilkins out. You knew that Brissett was out. But uh, as, I, as I like to say, sometimes the other guys are on scholarship, too. So maybe yeah, you got to see what the other guys can do. Yeah, the other guys practice, too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Colin Lee has he's got non-passing attempts, so uh, a little below his average. So, you know, you want him to get uh, more passing attempts. I think another stat that we didn't show is just time of possession. Mm -hmm. um, like, like Coach Laycock said, the, the tribe have moved the ball. They haven't really done a lot with it in, in terms of points, but they've they've managed to hold on to the ball, keep Kyle Aletta and that offense off the field. So you got to get the ball, you got to maintain the ball, and I think you're going to see him open it up a little bit in this half. And we talked a lot about William Murray's defense and the predicament they've been put in all year with short field. Uh, they gave they've only given up 400 yards once on the season, even yep. to JMU, but there was a lot of short field in that game. The Richmond defense over the last four games has played much better as well in the numbers that, that they had done, uh, looking at what the Spider defense had done in the last three games, 15.7 points per game and 258 yards of total offense. Yeah, I said that from the beginning. You know, I know, like I said, there was some panic when our defense uh, wasn't performing well, but I just felt like with Coach Huseman being – a defensive guy. He's a defensive coach. I've just felt like he's going to figure it out. The talent is here. The guy's got to understand the concepts that he that he wants them to learn. They're going to get better, and, and they've gotten a lot better. We've, we've seen that. I think in terms of the, the Tribe defense, they're undervalued, underappreciated because of the struggles of the offense, and, and we're seeing just how good they are now uh, up front. And I think uh, I think the coaching staff of the Spiders knew that because they've been watching film. And, and I know you can't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway because, you know, the if, the if thing. If William and Mary's given up 23.6 uh, points per game on the course of the season, you take out the Virginia and the JMU games, and they're at 16.8. Now, obviously, they played those games and they count. But in the other opponents, they're very stingy as far as points given up per game. Absolutely. I mean, you know, again, Coach Laycock, legendary coach. He's got a good coaching staff around him. Uh, you've got some guys who've got experience. So I mean, they know how to coach. They know how. They know what they're doing. And, and I think sometimes if you don't follow a team, you just see the record. You see they're coming in with two two wins. What they don't see are the things that we now pull up with stats. You start to look at the stats. They tell a story. You start to look at the roster. That tell us, tells a story when you see freshmen, sophomores, and, and, and little to no seniors. So they're a good team. Obviously, I believe the Spiders are, are a better team, and they need to get out here, and they need to perform like that in the second half. Uh, they're going to have energy. They're going to have excitement. I think they're going to make plays uh, – frequent and often and uh, and soon yeah, Garrett Hudson in the press conferences this week he said we're the best five and five team in the country uh, from speaking of <laughs> Richmond so uh, there might be some truth to that I guess yeah no doubt about it I mean you're talking <laughs> about five losses four of them coming from teams that are headed to the playoffs uh, definitely and maybe even a, a third if Delaware uh, maybe even a fifth if Delaware manages to make it so little wind today with the front coming through right now that wins out of the southwest so we'll see if it shifts later on today. Remember, Richmond deferred to open the game, so they'll get the ball to start the third quarter. And this kick with that win behind it goes all the way into the end zone. And Porter Abel will not come out. So Laletta a chance to get his hands on the football. He came into today uh, first in the nation in yards and uh, also total offense. 359.8 total offense, 3,516 yards on the season. He was only 293 yards away from passing Michael Strauss for the most yardage in a single season coming into today. 
Uh, <laughs> that's about the only uh, stat he doesn't have, or the only the, the only category where he's not first. So maybe he's leaving something for someone else. We'll see. Have to have a pretty magical second half for the, to break that one at this point. Out of the shotgun. Back to throw, looking out in the flat. There's Simpson, who had actually lined up in the backfield, and he came out of that backfield down the right sideline all the way down to the William & Mary 45. So not wasting any time right now after only nine uh, you know, chances to throw in the first half. They come right out uh, right now, uh, come right to the ball and, and give uh, Kyle Aletta and Quartrell Simpson uh, an opportunity. That's been some kind of duo all year long. Simpson had motioned from a wide receiver spot and lined up as one of the running backs. That's his first catch of the afternoon. Inside handoff, Goodall runs into a pile and not much more as he is stopped after a short gain. Yeah, Cortrell Simpson has been super quiet today. Not only his first catch, it might have been his first target. So we'll see. Now, some of that may have, to have something to do with, like, getting quarter able, Deshaun Tibbs, some, some, some opportunities. And you've seen, you know, we've run the ball more than normal. Uh, more than we usually do today, so I'm sure all of that factors in as well. Good all out, Palmer in. Not sure we've seen Gordon Collins today either. Here's the snap, the fake. Lawletta's under pressure right away, rolls away from it, throws out here the near side, and Tibbs with a juggle. Did he catch it? Tribe sideline says no, but the receivers say yes, and the officials too. Official was right there, and obviously, you know, Coaches on the sideline are going to say it's not a catch, but let's check it out. Oh, yeah, clearly gets both feet in. Doesn't look like a bobble. We'll take another look at it, but ref didn't hesitate to make the call. Good grab by the senior Tibbs. They may be taking a look at it. The replay booth is next to us, but the blinds are drawn, so we can't see what's going on in there. Lone setback. Laletta hands to Palmer trying to pick his way over the left side. That's the safety, Mike Barta, up from his free safety spot to be one of those in there to make the stop. Might have also been Nate Atkins in there, too. Atkins, very active. I interesting play. So it looks like they're going to, okay, looks like they're going to punt the ball here. I would have thought maybe this was four down territory, particularly with, you know, Kyle Laletta at the helm. Didn't get the first down on that carry. Armstrong deep at the 10. Ball at the William & Mary 37. Kalkowski takes the snap, and he's going to pop it up in the air with a little backspin on it. Lands at the 6 and checks up. Now bounces back across the 10 to the 13. So, Richmond playing it close to the vest there, and they'll pin the Tribe deep, and they'll start at their own 13-yard line. Super conservative. Maybe just trying to play the field position game here. Uh, see if they can get down here, get a quick three and out by the Tribe and get the ball back in a in great field position for the Spider offense. 7-3 Spiders, third quarter. Here comes Tommy McKee out there. You always like to see what type of adjustments were made at halftime on both sides. So uh, we see the Spiders, they came out initially, they wanted to they pass the ball on the first down, but they went straight back to running. Let's see what uh, type of changes the, uh, the Tribe have. Armstrong motions right to left for the Tribe on first down. And McKee to throw, looking down that left side, rolls out, pressured out of the pocket, throws it deep downfield, it's knocked away. Nice play by Daniel Jones to smack it away from the tight end, Andrew Caston. Yeah, really great. That was a you know really great co coverage overall. Uh, McKee, again, we talked about him being an athletic, and he can move around back there, and it's it's difficult to bring him down. He can extend a play, so you have to stay in coverage. Daniel Jones doing a great job. Uh, tight end comes all the way from the other side of the field, scramble drill, and you just got to stay with your man, and he makes the play. Kaskin had uh, two touchdowns against Richmond last year in the Capital Cup showdown in Williamsburg. This is the second and ten for the Tribe. Evans will sweep left. Found some running room across the 15 and all the way out to the 18. Really been impressed with, with Nate Evans. Again, the Richmond product right out of Lee Davis. He, he finds a way. He finds holes. You look and it's just a, a mass of bodies and he finds a way to get skinny. He knows when to plant that foot, stick that foot in the dirt and get upfield. Third down it is. Five yards from the Tribe 18 for the quarterback. Tommy McKee, the junior out of Virginia Beach. The snap, the key to throw. Rolling right, pressure. Chased by Clyde, who can't get him. 
He'll get the 20, and a flag comes in on Armstrong's block as McKee got out of bounds at the 21. It's going to be short of the first down, so it'll be fourth and two with a penalty on the play as well. You've so. got to love the hustle of the big boy on this, Andrew Clyde. I mean, there's probably no way he's going to get to McGee, but he, he keeps coming, keeps coming. You pressure him to make him have to make a decision. Let's see what the penalty is. There is no foul for a block in the back. The block was from the side. The result of the play is fourth down. Well, the Armstrong block apparently came from the side and not from the back, so... The result of the play short of the first down anyway, so Michael will punt for William and Mary. Well, we talked about the, uh, you know, the Spider coaching staff being super conservative. Why, why run it on third down and, and why not go, it for, go on it for fourth down? But it looks like it, it makes sense here. Defense comes right out, gets the three and out. Should be good field position for the Spiders. Abel back deep along the near side looking for this rugby-style kick. It's low and it'll bounce. Abel came up on it but can't field it. Now it's going to roll. And that's a big switch in the field position all the way down to the Richmond 26. That's where the Spiders will start first and 10. When we get back here to Robin Stadium, third quarter action. Spiders up by four, 7-3 here in Richmond. Some economic forces like interest rates are so influential they can affect the performance of all financial companies. So why choose an individual financial stock? The Financial Sector Spider ETF offers the diversification of the entire financial sector of the S&P 500 while minimizing single stock exposure. The Financial Sector Spider, the next chapter in investing. Before investing, consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Go to SectorSpiders.com for prospectus containing this information. Read it carefully. Blunt Chevrolet is the Chevy truck expert, period. If you use your truck for work, for play, or both, then go where the truck guys go. Lux Chevrolet in Ashland. A big selection of trucks on the ground and inbound. Frustrated with deceptive pricing that excludes destination fees or non-qualified rebates? Buy with confidence at Luck, where there are no hidden fees, upfront and honest pricing, and trustworthy employees. Go to LuxChevrolet.com to see how much you can save. Shopping for a Chevy car or truck? Buy it from Luck. Luck Chevrolet, the Chevy truck experts. So, what are you in for? <laughs> well, according to this discipline slip, I was allegedly talking during quiet time again. But there were no witnesses except the teacher's pet. Oh, really? Her testimony shouldn't be admissible. <laughs> so I'm here to appeal the decision. Oh. Fund your kid's potential. Well, I'll see you in law school, kid. <laughs> All the way through grad school. Tame the tuition monster at virginia529.com. Spiders with a football and a four-point lead here in the third, along with Chris Anderson and Sean Robertson, Robert Fish here today. As we bring you this Capital City Classic, Lawletta slant to Simpson into the 45, breaks a tackle, and there he goes. They try to chase him down from behind, but they won't get him. Touchdown, Richmond. Lawletta with a big strike. Looks like a 74-yarder, and Richmond is on the board again. I tell you what, when you've got that type of speed, that type of athleticism, it doesn't take much. Easy catch. You break a tackle, he's, and he's off, off to the races. Great job. Great pitch and catch. Way to break a tackle by Cortrell Simpson and make something out of nothing. Ran right out of the Aaron Swinton tackle who gave him the inside on the quick post route on the slant, and Simpson was gone after that. It's another big play for Simpson who had a 93-yarder earlier this season. Yeah, and I think we talked about it. Wow. Looks like and he missed it. Trowell missed it right, so it stays at 13-3. to Trowell missing the extra point was uh, 35 of 38 before that one. Right there, Swinton just couldn't make the stop, and he ran away from Isaiah uh, Lasseter, who's in there for Mike Barda. Yeah, and I think we I think we had talked about this just before, just kind of at halftime, coming out of the half. Hey, let's 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 uh, let's take the training wheels off. We we got a superstar uh, quarterback, and we we got a couple of superstars receivers. One of them by the name of Cortrell Simpson. Let's get the ball in his hands, and let's let let them make the magic happen. Uh, and, and I think that's exactly what we decided to do. It doesn't need to be complicated. doesn't need to be difficult. Simple three-step drop, pitch and catch, boom, magic. Simpson's touchdown catch is his sixth of the season. And he's up to 104 yards now on that 74-yarder there. King and of the big play. Lawletta's 28th touchdown. He came in today fourth in the country in touchdown passes. So 
That's what uh, Richmond is this year. Pretty much a passing team is what they've been all season. And they strike big here for a 10-point lead. The extra point, no good. Just like that, I said, you know, chances of Kyle Aletta getting the yardage he needs to run into the number one single season uh, record to, to get that done today. I thought that wouldn't happen. And just like that, one play, and now it's looking possible. Giles on the far side. Now he has a little room to work with. And gets out to just shy of the 34 for Noah Giles on the return. So let's see what the Tribe does now. With a 13-3 to Richmond advantage. And, you know, this is an interesting point in the game. If we see if the Spiders get a three and out here, would be the last thing that William & Mary would want to see, I'm sure. It's critical. And we've, we've talked about all, we talked about this all year, uh, about the defense just, just having that killer mentality, that, that, that mentality that, hey, we're going to take you out right now. We're going we're gonna to take control of the game right now. Um, you kind of step on their neck and, and, and get a three and out, get the ball back in the hands of your offense. Let's see if they can do that. Giles motions to a back position. They'll hand it to him, and he'll come back to the right. And Jordan comes up to make the stop at the 36 with a little help from Matthews. Check in with Sean Robertson down on that sideline where uh, Cortrell Simpson got a nice welcome committee after that score, Sean. Absolutely, Robert. I mean, I noticed the first guy that was right beside Simpson and, uh, tap, you know, patting him on the back and smiling and showing him some love was Tyler Wilkins. Uh, Simpson, as you guys had mentioned, has struggled in the middle part of the season after breaking through early on in the year, caught that touchdown pass, and Tyler Wilkins was the first guy there showing him some appreciation for a great play after the catch on that touchdown. Second down and seven for the Tribe. McKee will keep this over the left side off the read option fake. He gets all the way out to the 44, and that run's going to be good enough for a first down. So what Jimmy Laycock mentioned at half, Chris, was the ability of McKee to run the football, and we see a little bit of it right there. Yeah, that was a good example of it. Uh, the, the kid is just he's, he's good with the ball in his hands. I mean, because it's not like he, he had the spiders fooled. Uh, they actually reacted well to the, to the quarterback keep. He just finds a way to kind of put his head down, make one miss, and get to that first down marker. I saw those spider receivers over there with Wilkins and Simpson a moment ago. So first and 10 for the Tribe, just shy of the 44. McKee to throw off the fake. Looking down that left side line, Trent Williams is there, and he and Jack Armstrong battle for the ball. It's incomplete. I like coverage Trent by Williams. Williams yeah, yeah I, I've watched him play all year. Uh, he spells guys. He gives guys a blow. He comes in in certain packages. Really like the way he's got great ball skills. And, and a lot of defensive backs are athletic. Uh, but there's a reason they're not playing receiver. They're playing defensive back because they can run, they can cover. A lot of times they don't have great ball skills. I always like the way Trent Williams just does a great job of finding the ball, reacting. And so you're, I'm not going to say never, but he tends to not get those pass interference calls because he's got his eyes on the ball. Six-foot sophomore out of Chester, Thomas Dale High School. Second and ten for the Tribe at their own 44. The fake to Evans, the pressure, McKee spins off one, got away from another, and then threw it out of bounds here on the near sideline. Boy, they had him surrounded, but somehow he got out of there. Absolutely. You, you can't coach that. You cannot coach that. That's just an awareness and athleticism. Kobe Ritten comes in flying, looks like he's got him. He gets away. Brandon Waller has a second chance, gets away, and it's just intelligent enough to get rid of that ball. So I mean, he's, uh, you know, in his escapability and ability to move, he's kind of Aaron Rodgers-esque with his ability to get away from pressure. Not bad at all. Third and nine. Let's see what the Spiders can do here. Third quarter, Richmond up 10. Big third down for the Spider defense. They play deep. McKee to throw in the middle. Great catch by Armstrong and breaks a tackle and gets out to the Richmond 40. That ball was behind him, and he reached back and grabbed it and makes a big play for William and Mary. Yeah, great pressure as well by the Spiders. They're bringing the blitz. So as, as a defensive back, I'm going to pick on Mansa a little bit here. As a defensive back, when you know you got the blitz coming, the receivers can't go deep on you because they're not going to have the time. So you know he's going to run to those sticks. you got to be sitting there at those sticks. True, the receiver makes a great, great catch, but Spider defense has got to be there. Defensive backs need to be there to make that play. Know where the sticks are. Defensively, it helps. First down, Tribe. McKee steps up, goes right side, looking for Lowry in the end zone. Good coverage by Main, so the pass is incomplete. Yeah, they tried Mainz on that one, does a good job. Again, when he gets his head around, he's in great position, always in great position because uh, he's athletic. But this time, look at the difference when he gets his head around. 
no confusion. He knows exactly what he wants to do, what he's trying to do. Makes all the difference. Great play. It's almost like he's playing the ball instead of the man. Exactly. In that instance. I'm it is tough at that corner position. You're on the island. When you're playing the man and you can't find that ball, you get nervous. That's how you get touchy. Jimmy Laycock opening up the offense a little bit here. Down 10. Third quarter, second down. Another pass from McKee, and he finds Kuzjak on the near sideline, who steps out of bounds around the 32. That's going to make it third and short for the try. And, you and this is the McKee we saw last week against Towson, getting into rhythm and completing. Coach Laycock at half said he wanted to see a little bit more uh, decisiveness out of his quarterback. And Coach Laycock is making it easy for him as well. Like, hey, we're not going to put you in a third and nine. We're going to try to avoid those third and nines. We're going to get you as many third and threes, third and twos as possible, which we have right here. Here's the snap. Quarterback draw. McKee finds a hole and stretches across the 30. And he's going to get the first down, down shy of the Richmond 29-yard line. Another one of those plays. We talk about the escapability, the maneuverability. That You can't coach that. Uh, it, it's red. Guys see the, the, the draw. Maurice Jackson gets there. Uh, McKee just knows where he needs to go, what he needs to do to get that first down. He has just enough to get there. Trying to pick up the pace here. They're breaking that huddle quicker and quicker. Armstrong to the left. Jalen Christian to the right. First down. Sweep left for Evans. He cuts inside and turns up field quickly, shy of the 26-yard line, and it'll be a gain of three on the play. William & Mary offense trying to get a little bit of rhythm. They've had some guys in and out on the offensive line. Even today, the senior, Chris Durant, tried to give it a go, but got hurt again on the first play. He's been out for injury a number of times this season already for the Tribe. The Tribe offense is getting to a point where, where they're just, they don't want to beat themselves. They've done that early in the season. Right now, they're not beating themselves. Second and seven. Fake the sweep. Give the counter to Giles. He runs away from Clyde. Runs over Mainsa. Spins off a tackle in the arms of Jones all the way down to the 20. To see where they spot it. But it's a solid run there for Giles off the left edge. And when you're working with a young offense, first thing you want to do is eliminate mistakes. Eliminate uh, unforced errors, you know, get them in a position where you're not beating yourself, and then you just you, you make the other team have to beat you. So that's what the Spiders need to do right now. They need to make a play. You're going to need a sack. You're going to need a tackle for loss. You need something to break up the momentum. You need something to, to uh, you know, get them out of these third shorts. You need to make a play here. Third down and a little less than two yards here. Here's the snap. The sweep right to Giles, turns the corner to the 15. Springs runs him out of bounds inside the 10. But the Tribe will get a first and goal now off of that run down at the 9-yard line. Yeah, McKee, we talked about him. He's definitely in rhythm. That was a good decision by him. Uh, you, you had to know everybody. We're, we're expecting him to run it on that one. And that time he decides to give it. And, uh, you know, great job, great decision by him. They get the first down, first and 10 at about the 9-yard line. First and goal, excuse me. First and goal it is. Now watch your tight end, Kaskin here. Lined up on the left side of the line. Snap to McKee. Sweeps Evans to the edge. He's got some room. He got a block inside Jordan to the goal line. He dives, and I think he's short. Thought he got in for a moment, but it's going to be second and goal from just inside the one. He was close. Maybe he stumbled. But he was definitely close. When he first first handed the ball out, nobody was out there. I thought he was going to walk into the end zone. It's a good block on the edge here on Jordan, right in your picture in a moment, right there. Almost a block in the back, but not quite. Well, they might take a look at this. Looks like a receiver goes in to crack, and the corner just doesn't make the adjustment to come up and set the edge. So second and goal inside the one. Two backs in the backfield. McKee will run the quarterback draw, and he's over the right side and into the end zone, and the Tribe cuts into the Spider lead now with 5.28 in the third, and it is a 13-9 Richmond advantage. And unfortunately, that's kind of been, you know, the way the season has gone for the Spiders. The defense playing well, playing well, playing well, and then you get in an opportunity, 
uh, where you need to get a stop, get the offense, the ball again, see if you can get some more points on the board and really, you know, take this Tribe team out of the game and just not able to do it. That's a 13-play, 67-yard drive, Chris. Took 546 off the clock, and that's exactly what William & Mary wants. Snap and hold are good, and the extra point is boomed through, and we've got a three-point game. Spider scored to take that lead, but the Tribe comes right back. It's Cortrell Simpson with a 74-yard catch and run to give the Spiders the lead, but a methodical drive capped off by the McKee run. It's the Tribe back to within three here in the third quarter at Robin Stadium this afternoon. Tribe drives downfield, 13 plays, 67 yards, 546 off the clock. Time of possession now, 23-14 to 16-18 in favor of William and Mary. And a 13 to 10 spider advantage on the scoreboard though. Kickoff from Hooper coming here. And it drives Abel into the end zone and it's through the end zone for the touchback. I tell you here, one of the big differences this game so far has been the, the Tribe has, haven't bitten themselves. They haven't, you know, they, they've been snake bitten so uh, so far, uh, so often this season where, you know, they've just unforced errors and, and you haven't seen any of that. They're making the Spiders have to create plays and create turnovers, create issues. This young team has gotten to a point where you're going to need to beat them. They're not going to beat themselves. Sean Robertson's on that sideline for us today. You're around that defensive huddle after that last drive, Sean. That's right, Robert, and most of the talking was done by the defensive coordinator and head coach Russ Huseman. The players really didn't say much at all in that defensive huddle, so they were really focusing on what defensive coordinator and also the head coach Russ Huseman was saying. They were not happy on that last drive. Lawletta's pass to Simpson incomplete at the 28. Denzel Dykes on the coverage that time. Interesting note about Dykes. He is aspiring to be a writer. He likes to write stories and screenplays. And that's his uh, desire as he covered up Simpson on that play. I'll tell you what, one thing, no matter what, there's going to be a lot of successful guys on this field. Flag on the play. Deep bomb left side downfield. And there's Dykes again to knock it away from the Spiders' intended receiver at the 30. I believe that was Drake downfield. There is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I just love the reaction by both Kyle Letta and, and Caleb Drake. As, and the minute that flag came down, they knew, okay, this is offsides. Caleb Drake takes off. We're going to take a shot deep. Offsides. Offsides Defense, again. Number 95 in the neutral zone. This, this time it's Bill Murray. Yard penalty remains second down. Tribe didn't find anything funny about that one as he's offsides. <laughs> Murray, the sophomore from Millington, New Jersey, has got a pretty good career going, though. He's got five and a half sacks. I wonder if this generation even even jokes him about that name. They don't know about Bill Murray. <laughs> you know, in the ninth grade, Murray, the did, Murray admittedly said in the ninth grade he didn't think he was very good. He was six feet, 175 pounds, and he sprouted. He's 6'4", 275 now, and he got a whole lot better. They called out a late bloomer, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely. 
little shovel pass to Abel off a snap handle by Laletta that was uh, very, very well done. To the 40 goes Abel for the first down. Yeah, that's a little stuff you don't appreciate, man. That was not a great snap. Not only does Kyle scoop it up, but quickly gets it to Porter Abel, who's sprinting at full speed. So senior to senior on that one. Good hands by Laletta. Abel comes up limping, however. Spider drive here in the third quarter. Ahead, 13-10. Tight football game for Richmond. Here's the snap. The handoff. Goodall back in there. Big hole over the right side. And Goodall close to 10 yards, just shy of the 50. What I'm, what I'm in, appreciating now is just starting to see the balance. Uh, they come out in the, the second half. You're, you're letting Kyle throw the ball, open it up. Then you come back to that same run, which was getting you three or four yards. Now all of a sudden it gets you nine, ten yards. Puts you in a second and short. Uh, just knowing Kyle, I don't know. He may, uh, again, traditionally he'll take a shot here if it's, if it's there. Um, but when you're in second short, you can do that. Armand Jones with a tackle. He had eight tackles against New Hampshire earlier this year. A sophomore out of Chesapeake. So Laletta here with second and one. Takes the snap. He'll give to Goodall over the right side. Lots of running room. There goes Goodall. He's loose. He cuts to the middle. It's a foot race to the corner. Down to the 10, and Denzel Dykes rolls him down around the six-yard line. Big run from Goodall, and enough for first and goal now for the Spiders. I'll tell you what, Xavier Goodall, there, there's a strength there. I'd have to check him out in the weight room, but he just has a way of breaking tackles. He has a way he doesn't get hit cleanly. That was a great cut. Recognizing there's nothing on the backside, that gets him about 25, 30 more yards on that carry. Ends up with a 46-yard run, so Goodall now has registered 129 on the afternoon slash evening, and he'll try to finish it off over the left side to the goal line. Stretches for the pylon, and the arms are raised. He's in for the score. Second touchdown for Goodall on the day. And the Spiders go up 19 to 10 with the extra point coming. Got to smell it. Smell the end zone on that one. Again, gets hit right there, but he knows that pylon's right there. Reaches out for the pylon. Touchdown. Caleb Drake with a good block right there at that pylon. He had taken the defensive back and pushed him downfield quite a bit. They Receivers have to block, touchdown. too. Right? So that's what they say. Nice job, Goodall, second score of the game for the sophomore running back. There's Griffin Trout, we know. Puts that one through the uprights, completes the drive. There's Goodall, and Goodall Getting that block on Ray Sean Simpson from Caleb Drake and Xavier put the head down and just pushed everybody in toward the pylon. And really, that entire drive was just kind of a work of art. Just come out early, uh, early in that drive, you throw a couple passes, you loosen them up, and then you go back to some runs that, like I said, early on in the game, you're getting three and four yards. Now all of a sudden, boom, those holes open up. Uh, Xavier Goodall always does a good job of getting skinny, finds the opening, gets uh, that big 46-yard carry before the touchdown. a happy young man. Well, it's a big day for Goodall, just a sophomore, a local product from Henrico. He's 5'10", 190. Coming into the game, he was uh, averaging 4.9 a carry. He's averaging 8.9 here this afternoon. Charison's kickoff a little bit into that wind, which is coming in, and it's a high short kick. Coming up on it, Giles of the 20 to the 30 and pulls his way out just shy of the 35. Well, listen up guys, could a woman be pregnant with your child right now? If you aren't married to the child's mother, your rights as a father could be at risk. Register with the Virginia Birth Father Registry before or within 10 days of the child's birth. Visit www.vabirthfatherregistry.com. All right, I feel like we were in this exact spot <laughs> just to drive a go. Let's see if the spider defense again can get out here, get a stop, that the offense is now rolling. You've got back-to-back -back series where you we uh, ended in touchdowns. See if the spider defense can get a stop, get the ball back in the hands of the quarterback in that offense. 325 in the third. 
Tommy McKee, 8 of 21, 69 yards. He's back to throw again. Steps up in the pocket, under pressure, throws down the middle. Nice cut by Mainson and knocked the ball away from the intended receiver at the 35 of Richmond. Kuzjak was the intended target. Great job by Mansa. I tell you what, man, if I could just, we could just go back and maybe just, uh, just, if you look at his season, he does a good job. They try to run a post. A post puts him in a situation where his eyes are back on the quarterback, or, and he finds that ball and knocks it down. Just something about when he's in space and he's he can't find that ball. Is that a difference between being in zone coverage and man coverage, or that he, coverage there might have been more man, I guess? Or? I think I think it might have been zone, but at the end of the day, you only have one man in your zone, so, so it ends up being essentially man concepts. He just plays it well. The key out of the shotgun, fakes the handoff. Nice out route at the sticks to Kuzjak. And he's along the 43 for a third and one as he goes out of bounds at the 44. So just shy of the sticks. This is interesting because this is one of those things where, you know, maybe as a player you don't recognize it, but we can definitely see it up here in the booth because we're, we're out here, we're watching it. We can see they never want a third and long. So it, even if this second, most teams would go for the first down, they're going to take what you give them. So they'll take that second and seven because now it sets up third and a yard. See if McKee runs it here on third and short. Takes the snap, and he gave it to Evans, who can't get anywhere around the left side. In fact, loses yardage back to the 38, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Looks like big Brandon Waller runs that down. Had a little help from Kobe Ritten in the middle. Yeah, oh, Kobe Ritten, and then Brandon Waller cleans it up. Great job by those guys. Punt coming here from William & Mary. Porter Abel's out there, Sean Robertson, but they're working on him uh, during that last break. That's right. They retaped his left ankle. He did a couple of sprints on that last uh, possession for William & Mary, but as you can see, he's on the field. and away. So working on that ankle a few moments ago, but got it wrapped up. The punt from Michael coming here now rolls to the right, and we'll do that rugby kick. Abel comes up to field it on the run, breaks a tackle, and then is dragged down around the 33. But a good job to come up and catch that low, wobbly kick and not let it bounce even further along. Absolutely. His presence is critical at that point. Remember, Dejan Brissett is out, right? So Porter Abel is in. He does a great job back there. If you don't catch that, that could bounce another 15 to 20 yards. Not to mention, if you play that right, you catch that rugby-style kick. doesn't have any air under it gives you a chance to you know to really to threaten and maybe take that back to the house so spiders boom. come out now with a different setup as uh we'll get back to sean in a moment some a change on the offensive line for this first possession kyle laletta out of the shotgun takes the snap looks to throw right little in route knocked up into the air and intercepted by william and mary at the 35 pass was deflected and it's going to be picked off there by the tribe he's going to say alex light is out was out on that series but a big interception there for william and mary yep as gavin one. johnson with the pick yep. off the deflection Definitely an interception gets popped up, and like I said, that's that tip ball drill. And guys are being intelligent. You got to, you got to remember these are smart guys on, on this team. I'm just gonna call call them out, the spiders out a little bit. Office coordinator, why that is the third first down in which they've run that slant route. So you know, a good DB is gonna know you've run this three times on me. The fourth time, I'm gonna play it. He plays it tight, gets a hand in there, and pops it right up. And then Gavin Johnson picked it off. First and 10 tribe at the Richmond 35. A reverse to Christian around the left end with a blocker in front, and he tripped. He had a little assistance from his offensive lineman going around the corner, and that was Mark Williamson. But Christian stumbled. He still picks up some positive yardage for a second down at the Spider 27. The Spiders get a little lucky with that stumble. Uh, they definitely lost contain. Managed to keep it. A change, a change of, uh, you know, sudden change on offense. You either try to go deep, or you try some type of trick play. That was their version of the reverse right there. Tommy McKee, nine of 23 today. Gives the handoff to Evans, sweeping right. Nothing but red jerseys over there, but he still finds an edge. It's out of bounds across the 20 to the Richmond 19. They had him surrounded, and he still scored it through. Evans, like I said, impressive 
it's, it's interesting. We're watching two of uh, you know Richmond's best uh, two running backs the last few years. Goodall it's, from Henrico and Evans from Lee Davis. Absolutely. Richmond will kick out some good backs. So McKee puts his team at first and 10 at the Richmond 19. Motion from Christian, inside handoff. That's Giles with a stutter step. Giles to the 10, and Jones pulls him down around the 6 with some help from Trent Williams. Yes, yeah, so it looks like both offenses are starting to click on all cylinders. Trop driving again inside the 10-yard line at about the 6. It's a, a good hole right there over that right side. And Giles, who started the first five games. Evans, who started the last five for William & Mary. A good one-two punch. Evans in there now with Tyler Crist, the fullback, offset left. McKee under center. First and goal from the six. He's back to throw. Looking for the corner route. Jordan's got it covered. Back of the end zone intended for Kuzjak. Incomplete. He wasn't open at all. Man, I tell you what, that was great coverage. That was great coverage by Jerry O'Jordan. He saw it right now. Again, recognizing, and Coach Usman was talk, just talking about him. Jerry O really got, out, got off to a tough start this season. Tough couple games early on in the season. And just played great the last three or four games. He read that the entire way. Uh, McGee, didn't, McGee didn't really have much he can do with it. Senior making his 11th consecutive start and his 38th of his career. He's got seven pass breakups and an interception this season, does Jordan. Two seconds left in the quarter. Richmond up 10, second and goal from the six. McGee's going to keep this. McKee up to the middle at the goal line. Runs through Daniel Jordan's tackle, and he's into the end zone. Tommy McKee with the touchdown off that little keeper on the option read. And he found a lot of room in the middle of the field. Yeah, another good run by McKee. He's a big boy. He's just strong, has a nose for the end zone. But, but once he gets down there, he knows what to do with it. Well, they Jones took Andrew up Clyde out. That's a, that's a good block from Brooks Norris in there to get Clyde out of there. And that created the room in the middle. And McKee is into the end zone to make this a four-point game pending the Hooper point after. How about Tommy McKee? 6'2", 205-pounder. Yeah, playing well. You can see this offense is excited. They, they believe they can score. Extra point up, and it is good. So after a defensive slugfest in the first half, boy, these two squads now training touchdowns like there's nothing to it. We're heading to the fourth quarter. Spiders up by three as Tommy McKee working his way into the end zone this afternoon. McKee has rushed for 42 yards and two scores. This one pulls the tribe within three. We sent the kids here uh, to get leadership uh, development and, you know, just be in an environment that would allow them to grow in that, um, in, in that aspect. As a person, which he really has helped him, he's more confident. He's doing very well in school. Athletically, he's doing well. He seems to kind of have blossomed as a person. At Outback, Big Australia is back. So for a limited time, your favourites are getting even bigger. 18-ounce centre cut sirloin kind of big. Aussie bloom big. Boomerang beer flights big. Six layer chocolate cake. And ultimate great barrier combo big. Our biggest entrees ever. Hurry in now. Outback Steakhouse. Aussie rules. And come in every day for big lunch combos starting at $7.99. Whenever you have a chance to give back to the community, it's a special day. I just had the opportunity to help a mother and her three children move into a home. So Mobile Mini is actually more than just the leader in secure storage and office rentals. We are a community player. Giving back is one of Mobile Mini's core values. It's something that's ingrained in us. I take pride in knowing that my efforts in the community is helping to make someone's life better. Back by popular demand. Outback steak and lobster starting at $14.99. For a limited time, we're pairing our tender, juicy signature steaks with a mouth-watering steamed lobster tail. But hurry in, starting at $14.99, a deal this good won't last for long. 
Do you suspect that a woman could be pregnant with your child right now? If you aren't married to the child's mother, your rights as a father could be at risk. You can protect your rights by registering with the Virginia Birth Father Registry within 10 days of your child's birth. Registering helps prevent your future child from being adopted without your knowledge. You can also explore options to co-parent or even assume sole custody. For more information, visit VABirthFatherRegistry.com. Fourth quarter action. And right now, you see that Richmond offensive line, Blaine Markham and Patrick Klebert in there. Alex Light, we may get an update in a moment from Sean Robertson, is standing right there, too. So we'll check in with Sean after this kick. It's a high, short one, Porter Abel with a five. Up the near hash. Abel trying to work free. Got away from an arm tackle. Eventually across the 30 to the 32. Sean, what have you got for us as Light does come on the field? And, of course, you'd expect nothing less from this big senior out of Salem. You knew he was not going to miss this final 14 minutes of his career here in Richmond. They were working on his right knee during the last Trob drive. They took off his right knee brace. They were stretching it out, working it out to see if anything was wrong. And as you said, he's back in the lineup. He will not miss this last opportunity to be with his teammates. Sean and Chris, I got a chance to see that young man play basketball on uh, a Salem team that went to the state championship. Uh, he was uh, quite effective on the basketball court as well. Good feet. Does he have the yeah, good that's feet? What the, well, that's <laughs> what the recruiters come watch you play. Yeah. Here's the snap. Lawletta gives the hand, sweeping right, trying to get some running room and nothing doing to Palmer. Goodall went out in the left flat off of that play as an intended receiver, and Palmer tried to find some running room, but nothing doing. Got a couple. It'll be second and eight. Tried to decoy the Tribe defense, but they had it surrounded. You're right. Like, all of a sudden, this has become a, a, a track meet. This has become an offensive showdown. So, hey, you got to keep shooting. If you got bullets in your gun, you got to keep shooting. Got to keep scoring. Fourth quarter, the lead is only three for Richmond. Trying to get that Capital Cup back. Lalletta to throw near side. Drake the catch at the 39. Pulled back by Rayshon Smith immediately. But picks up a couple, so now it'll be third down. There you go. You got to do more of that. Uh, we talked about, uh, you know, the tribe doing that for their young, for uh, McKee, their quarterback. You know, you got to got to get some third manageable. Sometimes we get spoiled rotten uh, with Kyle Lalletta. We'll, we'll just take chances, but get him a third manageable every now and then. Where he can, uh, you know, throw it, or, or we can run it, or he can, uh, you know, get outside, put him in a run pass option. Lawletta with 204 today, 12 of 16, one touchdown. The 74 yarder to Simpson, third down here, back to throw under pressure over the middle, and that's batted into the arms of Nate Atkins for the pick, intended for Garrett Hudson. And one of the Tribe defenders, maybe Mike Barta, came in to knock it away, and it's picked off. Yeah, I think the issue is here. Oh, let's see what the ref has to say. Ruling on the field was an interception by Atkins, and Barta came over the top of Hudson, of, uh, Hudson and knock it away. Yeah, I think the real issue here is, is the uh, Tribe never bought the fake. They were expecting pass all the way, so it was, it was pass coming. Uh, defensive back is right on, on Hudson's back. He, he gets a tip in. Atkins is there to pick it off. So nobody even expected a run. They were definitely looking pass all the way. And it's actually Dykes who knocks it loose. So the 5'11 senior trying to write his own story here today. Gives his team the ball down three. McKee back to throw. Looking right, throwing out. And Mainsa escorts Kuzjak out of bounds. He made the catch, but he's out. Again, a good rush, some good pressure there by Brandon Waller and Andrew Clyde. You got to have that. Makes it second and ten. See if you can get another play here. Uh, but if, you, if we've looked at what uh, Laycock and that offense have done this far, usually on second and long, they'll come back, and, and they're not really going for the first down. They'll see if they can get five or six to make it third and manageable. See well, what they do right here. Well, Lutton has thrown two picks today. His tenth and eleventh on the season. Both have been batted balls. Little cross buck action. And look at Evans pick his way through the spider defense. He's still going. Trying to get a hold of him is Springs and brings him down at the 18 yard line. Nate Evans picking up a strong run. 
25 yards right through the spider defense. Yeah, picking and weaving, just some just some missed tackles there by uh, both backers, uh, both Dale Matthews and, and Justin Rubin. From the spider, 18. Tribe here, down by three, 20 to 17, fourth quarter. The tribe has had success when they get inside this red zone so far today. Giles resets as a back. They're going to hand it to him sweeping left. And Rubin tried to come in and make the play. Couldn't get a hold of him. He gets across the line of scrimmage where Matthews Jr. brings him down at the 13. But that's five yards. Yeah, the Tribe running east and west. And then both all these backs know how know when and how to put that foot in the ground and get, get north and south when it's time. And they really keep our running backs, you know, Dale Matthews and Justin Rubin. They keep them running. They keep them guessing. really take the aggression out of your linebackers, uh, particularly if you're not getting uh, pushed by that defensive line. Tribe has not won a CAA game all season. They're 0-7. But they're in position to make something happen here. Evans sweeping right, and he's cut off. Little or no gain. Spider defense answered that, corralled that run to the side. Now it's third down and about five from just shy of the 13. Here we go. We got a big one here. Third and five, third and five and a half. Let's see if we can make a play. Defensive backs play it tight. Only blitzed a couple times this game, but it, it, it's really tough to call a blitz because, you know, we and Mary just might run the ball. Well, McKee has run it in a few of these scenarios, but he has almost six yards to pick up. Out of the shotgun, he's back to throw. Got pressure off the edge from Wiggins. Now throws it to the right. Mainz is over there to knock it away from Kuzjak, the intended receiver. It'll be fourth down. We'll see if they try the field goal. And Hooper is coming onto the field. Yeah, Mance has really come through with a couple good plays the last few drives. Had that tough one earlier, that, that uh, pass interference. He's right there in position and makes that play. Mainz ahead, Kuzjak covered up. Spiders have a couple blocks on field goals and extra points this year. Let's see if they can get to this one. If not, we're looking at a tie ball game. Hooper has not been accurate throughout the course of the season. The snap and the hold are good. Strong enough kick, and he does make this one. So we're tied now after the turnover, the second interception of the game for the Tribe, and they now have a total on the season to give them the opportunity to tie this game after the Evans run. We're all even at 20 in the fourth quarter. We are all even at 20 apiece in this fourth quarter after a defensive slugfest in the first half. The two offenses come into the forefront now. A six-play 30-yard drive capped off by the Hooper 31-yard field goal set up by the deflected pass and William and Mary interception. And right now the Spiders and the Tribe all even 
at 20 apiece with 11-12 left in this contest. Hey, you expect nothing less. It's a big-time rivalry. It's a CAA game. Tribe got the Capital Cup last year for the first time since 2011. Richmond trying to get it back. And they'll have to turn to their leader here now, Kyle Laletta, with 11-12 left. A whole lot of time left in this game, so nothing do or die at this point in time. But if you're Richmond, you want a good drive here. Absolutely. William & Mary has a couple short fields, and they've, they've made the most out of the turnovers. They turn them into points. That last one coming off the interception by Nate Atkins. We talked about him pregame. Now, Hooper, their leader on defense. Hooper to kick off with that win. They got to hold it for him on the tee. Gets a good foot into one. Drives it deep. Abel going back into the end zone. And he'll take a knee after backpedaling to catch that ball. So that's a pretty good kick into this strong wind here tonight. 271 yards for William and Mary. 334 for the Spiders. Tribe has 193 on the ground. And remember, when they uh, win in this series, for the last three wins that they have, they've averaged 248. In the last 10 losses, only 72.8. So they're having success on the ground today, Chris, which for them is a pretty important number. Yeah, that, that's definitely important for them. And they had success on, on the run against us uh, last year. And uh, I tell you what, I mean, when, when you get into rivalry games, people are like, well, why is JMU beating everybody 50? But, but by 50, but we play so well, you, you just know your opponent. Same thing here. William & Mary really knows us. Laletta handoff right side and a short run cut short there as Nate Atkins flies in. The sophomore makes the tackle on the carry. Good old. Going off on that short gain, if anything at all. He's at the 25, so it'll be second and 10. Drake to the left, Simpson and Tibbs to the right. Now Drake comes back over here as well to the near side. Palmer's the setback with Laletta. Second down and 10. Here's the snap. Set the screen up, wasn't there. Now Laletta's looking. Scrambling, rolling, dropped in the backfield. Armand Jones, the linebacker, up to make the sack. Yeah, the screen, the, the, the tribe had sniffed out that screen, didn't have a lot to, uh, anywhere to go with that. You know, Kyle, if he could do it over, I'm sure he'd get rid of that, just throw that out of bounds, just trying to make a play, ends up taking a sack. That screen's not there. you got to get rid of that ball or, or get up the field right now. That's a seven-yard loss. Ten minutes left in this game. It's third and 17. Pistol formation. Play action to throw. Laletta steps up. Got a man open at the sticks. It's Simpson. He made the catch at the 35. Is it enough? That's I think be the close. progress is going to give him the first down. Boy, he was right there. He got knocked backwards, but it's good enough to pick up the first down and move the chains. Big game there on third and 17. Good job by Simpson. Catching that ball, holding on to it, and just you know knowing where the sticks are. He's right there. They might take a look at it. If I'm the Spiders, I go ahead and snap this thing. I don't take any time. Good tackle by Dykes. Hand off Palmer left side. Got the edge. Up the numbers. And he's out shy of the 45 for a nine-yard game. And you can see right there, that's a momentum type play. Uh, most people don't have a quarterback. They don't have receivers who can make those type of plays. Third and 17. Jay Palmer's gotten some time in the backfield today. Five carries, 23 yards, nine-yard rush there. Goodall's had 16 carries for 134. They've established him today. Second and one for the Spiders. Palmer over the right side cuts right into the arms of Corey Parker, but may have scored it forward enough for the first down across the 46. Yeah, I think they're going to take a look at it. Looks like he definitely got enough for that first down. The official says yes. Marius Young coming over there on that to pick up Nate Atkins and keep him out of the play. Atkins with 163 career tackles entering today. He got a pretty critical block. What Garrett Hudson has been quiet today. This is usually his part of the field. When we get around this 40 to 40, uh, or I'd say 40 to maybe the 30-yard line going in, this is this is Garrett Hudson's type of uh, 
area of the field. Let's see if we give him a shot. He's been targeted a couple of times. The last pass to him was knocked away for an interception. Lawletta in the pocket avoids the rush. Now he'll keep it. Good run by Lawletta. And all the way down into William & Mary territory. Inside the 40 to the 38. Hey, nice run from Kyle Lawletta there. I like it. I like it. I love it. And Coach Huseman has talked about that all year. Like, hey, if we didn't want to protect him, this kid's super athletic. We can let him get out there. He does well in space, makes one miss there. I like the decisive. Just makes a decision. Let's go get what we can get. We're not sliding here. We're going to get this first down. Gave that first down signal at the end. Nice job by the quarterback. Hand off Goodall. Left side got hit hard by Atkins. Broke the tackle, but didn't get any farther at the 35. It's simple stuff like that that I just love about Xavier Goodall. We talked about it earlier. Good, clean shot by Nate Atkins, their, their top tackler. And he finds a way to fight out of it and fall forward. Doesn't seem like a lot, but when it gets down to third and one, you know, th those deck that's uh, the difference between third and one and the first down. I like that type of tough running. Atkins has six tackles for the Tribe today. Rayshawn Smith with eight leads the way. Springs has nine for the Spiders. Goodall finds his way over the right side. Now breaks into the open. Trying to get the edge at the 25. And he's dragged down inside there by Parker. Gets all the way down to the 22 for another Spider first down. It's like Xavier Goodall versus Nate Evans here, isn't it? Richmond versus Richmond. Lee Davis versus Henrico. We've, we've seen this before. This, <laughs> been here, done that. Goodall gets that stiff arm out there. And that's what Parker grabs a hold of. The sophomore from Haymarket, Virginia, is Parker. So we're all even at 20, and the Spiders driving. There's Gordon Collins in the backfield now with Palmer. The snap. The give to Collins on the left edge. He's got a block. He's got speed. And he's tripped up at the 12 by Tenzel Dykes. Boy, he almost broke that into the end zone. Yeah, that's interesting. Gordon Collins has been banged up uh, really the last couple games. I didn't think we'd see him at all today. Yeah, he's so going to leave after that carry. So He, he comes right in and, and, and give him a carry. So he's been fighting through injury all year long. That's a great play by Dykes. He was on the ground. and You see Collins shaking up after that run. But that's a nice play by Dykes there as he bounced off that, bounced off that block and made that tackle. Good job by Collins getting in. I mean, again, you're hurt, you're injured, but your team ask it of you. You come in and you make a play first down. Well, Leno's going to try to run it, and he runs right into the arms of Bill Murray. Tried that read option. Yeah, good Murray job. Murray didn't fall for it. Good job. Bill Murray was ready right there waiting for it. You know, it's always you know difficult to tell. Maybe if you go, maybe he should have handed it off. But sometimes they just have it covered both ways. Looks like Kyle made the right decision. It was just, uh, you know, Tribe was expecting that play, and it was they were well prepared. They had both the quarterback and the run option uh, covered. Well, Murray just flat out beat his man at the line of scrimmage too. I mean, he yeah, was, that always helps. He right? was, he came right off of that snap, and he got past John Yarbrough, the center. And he was in the backfield quickly. Second and 14. Lawletta's going to roll out off play action into the corner and had to throw it away. Simpson was there and Dykes was there. He does a few push-ups afterwards after he uh, got in the way of that pass, which really I think Lawletta did the wise thing and threw it into the ground rather than trying to complete that pass because Dykes had it covered up. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you what, uh, we've been married. This defense, they're, they're an intelligent defense. They're, they're rarely out of position. Rarely out of position. You have to you definitely have to beat them. We run that play action and, you know, all levels, first level and second level, uh, first, second, and third level all covered well. Simpson draws Smith on this side on third down. Lalletta bobbles it, throws it into the corner for Simpson. Flag in the end zone. Interference on Ray Sean Smith, it would appear. Right there at the goal line, the flag comes out. Yeah, and just take a look again. The experience of Kyle Lalletta. The William and Mary, the tribe, they show the blitz too early. He sees it immediately. He knows he's got one-on-one -on -one outside. Now, it's a double move, so he's going to have to hold it a little bit longer. He holds it, gets what he wants, and uh, you get the defensive back holding on to Simpson. Now, the officials are discussing here. I think they're going to discuss whether a hold or a pass interference. 
if it's a hold, it's an automatic first down, is it not? Pass interference. And Defense. Pass interference is the call. 28. Ball be placed in the two yard line. Automatic first down. Now it's automatic first down out of the way, I guess, because right. they're putting the ball at the two yard line since it occurred in the end zone. Gotcha. So first and goal from the two. Well, I was just saying we were in Griffin Child trial territory, but I know the Spiders would get all that at this point. You want to get seven. You want to get six. Put that on the board. Get the extra point. You see 5 0 1 left in the game. Double tight end set. Good all up the middle. He grabbed from behind. Don't think he got in. Down to the one. No problem. Run it again. He's right there at the goal line. You got a little push. Spider certainly interested in taking as much time off of this clock as they can. I tell you what, Fish Bob and I talk about this all the time. Sometimes you just just want to see a team line up and run the quarterback sneak. It's, it's like a trick play these days. <laughs> if you see a quarterback sneak, I mean, it's, 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 it's like, you know, something you don't see. It's like seeing a full eclipse. You just don't see them that often these days. Spiders have broken the line, came to the huddle, and then went back as the officials just started the clock. Drake to the left. Simpson over there, too. Double tight end set. Garrity and Jacob. All that up, takes the snap, gives the good all over the left side. I don't think he got enough push. It's going to be third and goal. No, not yet. Third down, can't. Timeout here. Tribe takes that timeout with four minutes left. Third and goal from the one for the Spikes. Better look at this push. You want that push up front. And Goodall just hit. Is that Atkins? Yep, Nate Atkins. Yeah, he gets in there. Fills that hole, makes that stop. The sophomore out of Roanoke. That's what you asked for from the linebacker. He makes that play. And low man wins. That time he was a little bit lower. Now we are we are literally at maybe the six inch line. It's a good uh, play one, right one there by Atkins. That's just line. that's just one on one right there. Right. And that's what Atkins has done. 89 tackles this year. He's fourth in the CAA at 8.9 a game. He's got 163 career tackles. He's only a sophomore. Yeah, and something makes me think he's he's been doing that well before he got to William and Mary. Yeah, he did that he at Hidden Valley. Position, like I said. Yep. Uh, you know, low man wins, and he was definitely lower. Got right into the knees of Xavier Goodall. Let's he started 11 that. games as a redshirt freshman last year, did Atkins. He was a, an All-State, two-time BHSL All-State linebacker on the first team at Hidden Valley. Third and goal. Lawletta will try the sneak. You see that the arms play? are up for Richmond. He's into the end zone touchdown. You see that trick play? <laughs> Gets it in. Just put it, just get behind your offensive line. Let them go to work. This is what they do. Get upfield, get this touchdown. Big rivalry. Let's not play games. Let's get in this end zone. That's what Kyle Aletta does right there. Yarbrough gets a good block on Isaiah Stevens, the 6'2, 300 pound senior in the middle of that line. And that gave Laletta enough push. Now Gotta the love extra those point try plays. here. <laughs> he went right over there. Marius Young in the mix, too. Griffin Trout has a, has a missed extra point on the day, so let's make sure he gets this one in. We need this one touchdown lead. Out of the hold of Mancuso. Snap and hold both good, and Trout punches it right down the middle, and the Spiders will take a seven-point lead. So a big drive from Richmond as the Spiders go 14 plays, 75 yards. Kyle Aletta with some strong running during the drive. Seven minutes and 13 seconds off the clock. Xavier Goodall and the Spiders moving it downfield for Laletta to finish it off. The seven-point advantage with 3.59 left in the fourth quarter.
It's a big spider drive. It takes over seven minutes off the clock. And now with 3.59 left, Richmond up 27-20. And, Chris, it's almost as the team switch identities there. Spider's big, long time drive. And now William & Mary has to be the quick strike offense here with 3.59 left. Hey, you, you got to do what you got to do. You got to get in the end zone. What we have here is a good old-fashioned CAA barn burner, a battle, Commonwealth Cup on the line. Big plays. Evans tracks that down at the two, runs to the middle of the field. And he's got some room. And all the way across the 30 to the 35, and Gershom Johnny, who's been a special teams monster this season for Richmond, makes a saving tackle there. He really has, and Johnny's been, been uh, critical. No, no play bigger than that one. We needed that one. And Evans definitely has a burst. I love the way, like I said, once he decides where he wants to go, he finds that hole. He doesn't spend a lot of time left and right, east and west. He sticks his foot in the dirt. He gets north and south right now. Evans has had a big day. He's rushed for 77 yards. So in the second half, it's, it's, it's felt like Henrico versus Lee, Lee Davis. He's got Evans 12 yards Goodall. receiving. And, boy, he's had some good kick returning, too. Here's McKee out of the shotgun. Takes the snap, gives to Evans, trying to find room, and gets out to the 40, maybe the 41. Give him about three or four yards there. It'll be second and six. If you're the Spiders, this would be a great time. If you could take away one aspect of their of their game, if you could take away the run, make McGee have to beat you. So here's Evans' day, 127 total yards, 81 on the ground, 12 receiving, and 34 on kick returns. Second down. McGee takes the snap. He's going to throw. Throws it right side. Catch at the Spider 46. And a first down for Kuzjak out to the Spider 44. Yeah, Kuzjak, that was a good route by Kuzjak. Really put Manson in the washing machine right there, put him on his ground, put him on the ground, twisted him up, and then makes the catch. Good route by him. Manson slaps his hands afterwards. Here's the snap. Throw down the middle of the field. Oh, knocked away from Kaskin. He had to turn to catch it, and Daniel Jones gave him a big hit. Hey, man, can't coach it any better than that. Gets in, led with the shoulder, completely legal, separates the, the receiver from the ball. I love it. That's the way you, you coach it these days. Check that out. Boom. Leads with the shoulder. Keeps his head up, eyes up the entire times. Separates the receiver from the ball. Can't ask much more than that. In Kaskin's defense, he had to turn around to, to catch that ball. If that's on target, he might have made the grab, but he had to twist his body back. Yeah, it was, it was, was a tough one. Him. It was behind him. Giles resets on this second down. Hand to Evans. He's got nowhere to go. Tries to make something out of nothing, and he swallowed up at the 35. He may have lost a half yard there. That was the one. That was the one. We needed that. That's a big play. Uh, we've seen that before. Where Evans goes, and he finds a way to get something out of nothing. Even if it's just four or five yards, it makes it third and five. We need him in this third and ten situation. Great job by the defense. Kobe Retton does the honors, finishes him up with Justin Rubin right there to help out. That's everybody on that one, though. They're all in pursuit. Ritten just cut the lane off. Third down and ten. McKee back to throw under a blitz. He got away from Wobbler, rolling right, chased into the sideline, threw it out of bounds. Andrew Clyde over there with Ritten to try to make it harder for him to complete the pass. Yeah, Justin again, we're, seeing, too. we're seeing McGee at his best. He does. He, he gets rid of a defender, gets outside. I tell you, I said it earlier, I love Clyde. Everybody sees the strength. Everybody sees the power. The way he chases the quarterback, just, just I mean, he's a, he's, a, uh, he's a wild man out there. And that, that type of pressure makes all the difference. Now he's 6'3", 275, a junior. He's That's, a That's a big body in coming at you. Sacks. That's a big body coming at you. It's scary when he can run as fast as you can. 204 left in this game. Back to throw. McKee steps up in the pocket, trying to find his way to get away. He won't get away from Clyde this time. He and Waller finish off McKee way, way back on fourth down. The Spiders take over. There's that man again. 
knowing when it's time. We've seen him a year, uh, all year long. There's been times when he's been out with injury and he comes back in and makes a play. This defense needs a play. I'll tell you what, it's Clyde or Waller. That time we see both of them in on that sack. And that time, McKee just couldn't work his magic. He's been great and elusive the whole game in that pocket, but not this time. This is kind of when you appreciate coming off of, you know, he played Brian Shore last week at JMU, and this is what he does. So they, they practice that all week, an elusive quarterback, and a quarterback who knows how to extend plays. So this time, you know, they're ready, they see it, and they make the tackle. The Spiders have one of those red shirting this year that uh, is pretty mobile, too, that maybe he's on that scout team a little bit. So. Yeah, we'll see. That definitely helps. <laughs> Get a, get a chance to see Mr. Johnson next year. 201 left in the game. 27 20, Richmond, the ball in the lead. Give it to Goodall. Broken arm tackle and squirts out to the 45. Tribe takes a timeout. So they're down to one left. This is getting down to what we talked about. Uh, you know, just finishing finishing we've seen a couple games this year where the spiders had an opportunity to put the other team away they didn't do it and it came back to bite them 157 you want to pick up a first down here by any means necessary if that means we got to get Colorado outside you know run the pass option if the pass is not there he takes off let's find let's do it we got to get this first down make the tribe really run use their, their tight ends and uh, really can shut the game and end it right here seven to three at the half Richmond led this is a 20 to 17 second half which the Spiders have the edge as well Kyle Aletta today 13 of 19 221 a touchdown two picks both off deflections good all in the backfield on the second and nine and he'll give it to him he'll cut break a tackle and he's hammered that's got to be a, a strong play in the middle of that women Mary defense that time Matt Ahola in there to make the stop all right, here we go, third and long. Let's see what the Spiders do here. Trop still has one timeout, I believe. Boy, the, the Bill Murray penetration busted that play up in the backfield, even though Goodall avoided it. Murray got the first piece, and then that's a hole of there to finish him off. A hole is a senior. Murray only a sophomore, so you'll see him again next year for the try. Yeah, they've got a couple seniors up front. Stevens two another. And two sophomores. Yeah, Stevens and Ahola are the two seniors. But we've seen Will Kiley today. He's a freshman. Gavin Johnson's a sophomore. Joe Suarez is a sophomore. Bill Murray a sophomore. So a lot of strength on that defensive line as we get a timeout here. This is a Richmond's timeout. All They've right. got two left, one for the try. All right, Coach. Big play for the Spiders here. What's your thought? What are you thinking? What are you calling? Coach Fish, make the call putting you on the spot you are <laughs> i wasn't prepared to make that decision today <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what uh you know well me, you know you got some of your money guys out you know on your offense uh, i might just let my quarterback uh, get him on the edge and see if he can run pass option take the first down if it's there yeah i, I think all eyes are going to be on Cortro simpson uh I, I love garrett hudson in this situation if you can find a way to get him open uh, across the middle um, he's a guy he's made big catches for us in the past. I think he does a good job of, of getting in between uh, he and the defensive back. So he'll give you a big target, big body. And if he doesn't get it done, you know, he does a good job of making sure it doesn't get intercepted. Third and nine. Give it to Goodall. Look at Goodall up the middle. Another cut. Avoids a tackle. There goes Goodall down the left side inside the 20. And why not Xavier Goodall? He's been the guy today. And can't he believe you didn't call that fish. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't call that. Give the ball to Goodall and let him go straight ahead. My goodness, man. I make it easy for you. <laughs> yeah, you did. But look at Goodall run right through that defense. And Sean Robertson was calling it in, the, in our ear down there. So. Yeah. Sean called him. I, I think he called it right out there, right when Kyle put it in, 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 in his gut. <laughs> <laughs> now they'll go to victory formation and put this away. Good all, 23 carries, 180 yards, and two touchdowns. And he's probably going to be the MVP of this uh, 
Capital Cup Classic today. I think that, that cup is coming home. Coming home where it needs to be. William & Mary got it for the first time since 2011 with a 34-13 win last year with a 28-0 second half. Tell you what, it, it, it's missed its home. It's missed its home here in Richmond, here on the University of Richmond campus. Bring that thing home. Bring it on down, and let's, let's get it back, in the, back where it belongs. But the Spider Seniors now can celebrate a winning season, certainly short of what they wanted to accomplish, not being able to make the playoffs. But they get to finish it off with a 27-20 win over their arch rival, Jimmy Laycock, Russ Huseman talking afterwards and uh, what a showdown it was these two guys uh, know each other of course because of their history Russ Huseman uh, 84 to 97 on the William & Mary squad 2004 to 2008 here as uh, one of the coordinators for the Spiders and now the head coach this season and the Spiders come away with the win 27-20 to get that capital cup right. back here in Richmond and coach Huseman always refers to coach Laycock as, as a mentor been there with him, gave him his first start, his first coaching job. So uh, excited to see that, excited for these seniors. The third winningest class in, in, in Spider football history. Uh, maybe didn't end exactly the way they wanted, but uh, a great season nonetheless. Richmond ends the day as the Spiders hoist the Capital Cup down on the field with 423 yards, only the second opponent this season to go over 400 yards against William & Mary. So that's a big accomplishment there for the Spiders. Laletta, 13 of 19, 221, one touchdown, and two interceptions on the day. But Xavier Goodall, 23 carries, 180 yards, and two touchdowns, a 46-yard run. And he did a fantastic job today, did Xavier Goodall, the Spider rushing attack. Really did. Had a great game. I, I loved I said it before, I love the way he runs the ball. Feel like the offensive line believes him as well. Uh, you know. Let's get down to Sean Robertson, who's got uh, Coach Russ Huseman. Sean, I'm here with Coach Russ Huseman. You said you wanted a winning season and you wanted to bring the Capital Cup back to Richmond. Mission accomplished tonight. Well, our guys played really hard. William and Mary played really good. I mean, what they did offensively. You know, they schemed us up really well. Our guys somehow made a play. That sack at the end was huge. And then, obviously, the third and nine run by Xavier Goodall. Um, you know, our guys have fought. I told them they fought all year. I said, if we fight like we have all year, we can win the game. What can you say about this senior group with you coming here, getting that winning season, and as I mentioned, winning the Capital Cup? Wow. I, I, wish, I, I, told, I wish I could have done more to help them. I wish we were right now getting ready for playoffs. Um, we're not. But I, I wish I could have been I could have been a better coach this year and got him in a position where we could have, you know, won a couple more games and gotten the playoffs. I feel so bad for them. They're used to winning at Richmond and uh, great group of guys. Congratulations, celebrate, coach. Thank you. Twenty-seven twenty, Richmond getting the victory over William and Mary. Robert and Chris, back to you. Sean, thanks. Great job. But you can watch the rest of uh, the post game online with our video feed on uh, richmondspiders.com. Coach Russ Huseman will meet with the media. We're going to wrap things up on the TV side, though. Chris, enjoyed it. Great uh, great job today, and the Spiders with a great win over the arch rivals and cap it off at 6-5. and five. Great job by the Spiders. Great season. For Chris Anderson and Sean Robertson and our entire TV crew this afternoon, pleasure to be with you. Spiders win by 7. Robert Fish saying so long from Robin Stadium, and good night from Richmond. At the University of Richmond, we offer flexible and affordable degrees to help busy adults advance their careers. Earn your bachelor's or master's degree part-time at a pace that supports your schedule and a price that supports your budget. Visit us online to learn more. It's a great time to be a fan when you can come in the Buffalo Wild Wings and catch the best moments in sports. Unlike in Roman times, when you can become the sport. Is this section G? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh oh. Ow. Get the ultimate sports experience at Buffalo Wild Wings. Many U.S. tech companies are global leaders. 
In this constantly changing sector, it's hard to know which companies will gain, maintain, or lose industry leadership. So why choose? The Technology Sector Spider ETF offers the diversification of the entire technology sector of the S&P 500 while minimizing single stock exposure. The Technology Sector Spider, the next chapter in investing. Before investing, consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Go to SectorSpiders.com for perspectives containing this information. Read it carefully. It's never too late to return to school. Whether you're 25 or 55, the right college degree can make a career change possible. Earn your degree part-time in a high-demand field at a pace that supports your schedule and a price that supports your budget. 